Oh, you can probably hear me. Hi. I probably pushed the button too quickly, but hi, I'm Steve from Mac84. Welcome to another live stream. How's everyone doing? My goodness. Let's see who we got here in the chat. We have RetroTechie. We have Eric's Edge. And Eric did a lovely stream just before I joined, so please subscribe to Eric's Edge on YouTube. And we have Joe, Joe's Computer Museum. We also have Tom Tom Computing, Apple's Anonymous. Brian is here, Joe's here, Adam is here, Show on Action, Retro is here, Mass Hysteria. Uh, Distro Hopper is here. We also have uh, Flintlock and CS Waffy. And I think that's about it, at least for now. How's everyone doing? It's an okay day. A bunch of pins and badges on me. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Toby is here. Excellent. Retro Fox is here. So on the uh, the slate today, we have a Macintosh Classic. Is it Classic or Classic 2? Nope, just the regular Macintosh Classic. An excellent, excellent condition Macintosh Classic. Yeah, it's all pretty. Well, it's in pieces, but <laughs> we're going to fix that. So we did fix the logic board for that in a previous stream. And today we're going to try and tackle the analog board there. Can I have the Lisa pin? Well, we have some pins here, and we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> Sinister Pisces is here. Hello. <laughs> Sounds like a good way to spend your evening there, Adam. My goodness. I know. My brother is pestering me about some things. You know which one you are. Sorry. I'm going to get hit with the two-factor authentication dealie and uh, I have to respond to it because my brother has the worst timing possible. Uh, anywho, <laughs> um, no, I do not have a Lisa. Uh, Adam has a Lisa, but um, yeah. So here, let me show you this little pin. It's one of these uh, dealies over here, and it says, "Ask me about Lisa." Let's try and get this to focus because this webcam does not like to focus correctly, and we have to do one of these things. Look how pretty that is. Ask me about Lisa. So what this pin is, is actually a reproduction. I made it. And if you're going to VCF Midwest, you'll probably walk home with one of these. Um, I am involved in the Before Macintosh, the Lisa documentary. I am helping to edit that documentary. And because of that, I thought, oh, I'll make some little swags, a uh, little button thingamajigs as a promotional item. And I saw one of these vintage buttons that was on eBay for a silly price, and I said, that's just a bunch of text and an Apple logo. I could I could make that. And so I did. Not selling them or anything, just a promotional thing. And it says on the rim of the button, it's a promotional one, so nobody could think that it's a legitimate, you know, old pin worth dollars. And here's my brother's very poor timing. And I dropped my phone. Excellent. Uh, Tommy. My brother, why are you doing this at this point in time? There we go. And that's all he's going to get. Sorry about that. Okay, so, yes, I have pants on retro tech. <laughs> oh, goodness. Steve Trash is not worth that pin. Ask me about my hypercard theme. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, hit the like button thing with Jake. We'll, we'll get the stream to a its conclusion i guess I, there's all this crap on my desk i did not clean up i know but i have another pin that if you're going to vcf midwest you may find yourself in the possession of ready for a power pc upgrade this this will go great for that uh, 610 you just got eric oh come on there we go so again just a recreation of the sticker that used to be on select 68k max including the powerbook 500 series the quadra or centris 610 and a few others, so I thought that was neat. All right, anyway, we have our standard Mac 84 pin right below that, but um, you should have killed it. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see that. Hey, Logical Outlet, how's it going? All right, cool. So now that obligations are beside me, we can start talking about things. And one thing I want to show you is, uh, oh, do I have this set up? Oh, I do, maybe. Kind of, well, we're going to test it. We'll see if this wants to work. So... I've been tinkering around with uh, some servers. If you 
have seen uh, some of my Twitter posts. And, um, well, it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if I can get this working because I want to show you the XServe setup that I'm currently tinkering around with and that is over there above the refrigerator you can see all the lights there and uh, we're going to try and connect to my camera dealie and uh, so before we get into into this at least we could play around with this a little bit just want to show you some things um, should work I guess maybe Okay, it's not connected for whatever reason. Oh, I have to. I have to type in the the thing, I guess. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, sorry. Just give me a moment. And okay. Oh, there we go. And uh, let me just make sure if I need audio. Let me just make sure I got that. And I don't know if it's going to work. So we'll, we'll figure this out, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's going to work because I don't think you're going to have audio. All right, let me know if you could hear me. I'm going to switch this over in a, a second. And you could tell me if, if you could hear me. Just give me like a, a yes or a no, okay? Can you hear me? Probably not. Oh, actually... It looks like you can. Oh, okay. I see the little wavy lines going up and down. Um, great, excellent. Uh, Red Leader says, where are we with the recap? I didn't even start yet. Didn't even get it on the desk yet. Minecraft server when? Never. Sean did that. Let him do that. Um, Echo, okay. Hopefully the Echo got went away. Echo gun. Yeah, I, I had to uncheck the thing. Sorry about that. All right, so let's take a little walk. We and I won't be able to read any of your comments while I'm standing because I just have the phone. Um, so we're going to walk through the basement, sort of, a little bit. And uh, I just want to show you the Xserve here. So it's currently sitting on top of my fridge, which is a weird place for it, but that's, that's what I got here. So it's in this big rack. This is an X-Rack Pro. And we also have some Mac Minis up here, which need to be plugged in, and set up and everything. Hey, look, it's Eric's Edge. It's not going to focus, but there's his, uh, his sticker. And here's the back of it. We have uh, a fan doing fan stuff. I'm not going to attempt to open that door right now because it's not really secured and it's going to be weird. Um, but yeah. Needs uh, need some tidying up. I will open this door. It's fairly easy to do so. Notice how quiet it is. So I have a 2009 XServe here. Uh, this is a G5. And this one here is a 2006. These all work. I all set them up. But, you know, this rack can only hold one unit when you have the RAID in there. So it's separate for now. I'm going to do a whole video on this. So I'm just giving you guys a sneak peek. Uh, we do have four bays that are empty, thus the orange or red lights there. Now I'm going to open this up. And you'll hear it's a little noisier, but really not by too much. So it's a nice, neat little caddy there. And, and big thanks to my friend Keith. He knew people who were going to toss this to the curb. And I said, I'm crazy enough to put that in my home. And here we are after lifting it above my refrigerator and nearly dying in the process. So yeah, that's the X-Serve. And you'll see a lot more about that, I'm sure. So let's waddle ourselves back to the streaming desk and actually get some work done and see all of your silly comments that I couldn't read because I was far away. Okay. Let's switch back to the normal camera if I can point it correctly. Wait, there we go. Sorry about that. Always, always uh, trying to take around with this new stuff. Sometimes it's a little finicky. But let's catch up on the comments here. Is that a microwave? Yes. <laughs> Popcorn goes in the back. It comes out the back. Or either. I don't know. It depends on how hot it is. 
Look at all those minis. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's, 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 it's upside down, yes. Oh, wait. Was the video image upside down? Hopefully not. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I, I couldn't see what was going on. Anyway. Sorry about that. Uh... <laughs> uh, so uh, one of the extras is running Snow Leopard. Uh, the other one is running El Capitan. You can get it a little, you know, to go a little higher, but I just set that up as of now. Um, oh, yeah, title typo in the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll fix that. Um, at the event at NJ next year, do you need to rent a whole table to sell old equipment? Probably not, because I hoard, the, I mean, collect this stuff. So, yeah. All right, so let's get on to our purpose of the evening here. We already bodged up this stream a bunch, so no one's going to be watching it anyway. Uh, <laughs> click on edit here. Recapping. Now, what's scary is I uh, reused this from another stream, so I had to go and change that title there. I'm going to forget about that, though. But now the recapping can begin. And uh, my OS 10 server serial number is there. Let's move that to a safe place. And I was disassembling some Newton message pads because someone uh, sent me one to fix at uh, one of the VCF events. And where did I put that container? There it is. And it was not happy. Did not turn on at all. Now we, we sort of got progress on it, but... Um, it's still in pieces because it needs to be resolved. So that's going to be for another stream. I'm sure uh, the XServe will hold about two terabytes. But considering when I went to the XServe drive uh, setup process, and I'm going to be covering this in a video, but the drive said they had about six years worth of activity. That's not on and off. That's continual hours. About six years. I don't trust those drives to hold anything. I'm going to fill that up with old software and stuff. I don't, so if it dies, it's fine. Uh, I'm just doing this to play around. You'll see the purpose why in the video I'm making. And yeah, <laughs> I don't trust that one bit. Not one bit. Especially I spent, what, $80 and got a 5 terabyte hard drive at, at the store and plugged it into my Mac Mini, which is the real server. So that's yeah, fine. Oh, boy. Yeah, Ruck of Ruck, Greg Ruck of Ruck of Mods already filled uh, it with uh, one terabyte SSDs because each bay can only hold a terabyte due to the, the firmware of the thing. And uh, he has a 14 terabyte RAID and he has a whole video about it, so go watch that. My audio level is a bit low. Okay, well, I could uh, make it go a bit higher there. I could also yell at the computer. Uh, settings. This is what happens when you're going to stream for a while. Everyone. Everyone notices all the things you're doing badly. How about that? I hope that's a bit better. Is that too loud? If I start singing, will you all cry? Well, don't answer that. That's a very sensitive question. Okay, let's try and actually get some work done here. Um, or I'm getting old. <laughs> old man yells at computers. Yeah, nobody really liked my old man yells at cloud video. Even after I, I cut it down to like... 10 minutes less than the first cut that I, I showed on Patreon. Um, but that, this is me getting stuff off my chest. But I think that will be an interesting format to just have in my back pocket as I'm being a, a silly old person with these computers that clearly are uh, not intending to uh, do what I want to do to them as far as storing stuff and making stuff work and things like that. Starbuck Tech got his stickers, finally. Goodness. Good, good, good. The best video is that air duster. The, you mean the one I had to turn the comments off on because people were getting really stupid about it? You didn't test the attachments. My life is over. Like, all right, bud. Have a, have a good life there. All right, let's clear off the desk so we can actually do some work here. I should have done this before, but uh, yeah, look, capacitor values for the Newton. So when I eventually lose this piece of paper, now it's recorded for posterity. <laughs> I yell at clouds frequently. Excellent. Hey, Jay, how's it going? You missed the little upside down accidental XServe preview thing, but you've been spammed all of the pictures on 
on the Mac Yak chat, so you you know what I mean. Oops. And I dropped the flux. You dropped the flux, what a party foul. Alrighty. <laughs> Is it loud enough for you? As much as I love Steve Martin, I'm not gonna deafen you all. That's that would not be a good use of my time. Taste the lawsuits from here. But anyway. Again, I'll be at VCF Midwest, not this weekend, the weekend after that. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, ooh, that's fancy, Joe. Look at you being all fancy. And hey, Patrick, how's it going? And Michael, and Red Leader, and Starbuck Tech, and uh, KMAC, and Jay, and anybody else I forgot to say hello to? Hello. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this stuff going. Oh, yeah. Rick's Random Retro on YouTube. Just got a whole of Max. Really cool ones, too. Check that out. Um, someone put the link in the video description. Uh, in the, no, you can't do that. Put it in the chat. I just search for, or just go on YouTube and search for Rick, R-I-C. Random Retro. Excellent stuff. Met that dude at uh, VCF Midwest. Very nice person. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to recap the heck out of this analog board, hopefully. <laughs> oh, goodness. As I knock things over. Alright, you want to fall over, just do it. Alright, there we go. We had a wire on top for some reason. Yes, R-I-K. Did I say R-I-C? Or you said it? Anyway. I know what I meant. So, we have this Macintosh Classic here, and it's in lovely shape. So, oh, the second camera doesn't want to work today. Oh, that's lovely. Well, we're just going to use the one, I guess. That's a pain in the butt. But this is in spectacular condition. Um, really good shape. Have the screws here that are separate so I don't lose them because I will. And yeah, this works, but uh, the screen does sort of hourglassy shapes and stuff like that. Hopefully, all it needs is a recap because, to be quite honest, I'm very stupid when it comes to analog electronics. And when they start misbehaving, other than capacitors, then it's like, oh, you gotta replace this chip, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So, let's hope it doesn't come to that. I saw that, Adam. That's a good find, though, for what you paid for it and the goodies that you got. I mean, my goodness. I'll take one of those any day of the week at that price and for what was included. Now, speaking of analog electronics, we have to um, discharge the CRT. And if you see me lifting up things and looking under things, you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to find the damn part that was on my desk like all of five days ago. Um, yeah. Okay, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Well, I wish I had a, a, per a second person here because I could say, hey, look, we have things in a box to look at while the other person looked for the thing. Oh, here it is. It's right on my desk. So now I can waste time. Um, I meant to do this at the top of the show and I forgot. I got some goodies off eBay. Let me just share those real quick. When are they going to get you the recapping? Your videos are too long. I don't understand how digital media can be fast forwarded or rewound. This is an Apple CD-ROM Explorer. I believe this is basically like a hypercord, uh... Uh, disc with uh, a bunch of uh, fancy stuff. This is from 1988. Like the first public CD-ROM from Apple, or at least one of them. Hey, Sukatek, how's it going? Yeah, so this is a very early disc. This was on eBay. I didn't, you know, it's already archived and stuff, but it was in quite good shape, and it was not too much money. So I thought, grab that. Um, this is already archived on Macintosh Garden. This, however, is not, and I paid a, a stupid sum for this, but this is Apple Power Macintosh 7200, 7500, 8500, 9500, Radio Scripts and Ad Slicks. So this is a CD that's promotional material for these Power Macs. So probably audio, video clips maybe, maybe some PDFs. Have no idea what's on it. It's sealed. Absolutely sealed. I'll probably doing a little short video about this. 
uh, before VCF so I could, you know, have a video up while I'm at the show. So that seemed very interesting. So I did want to mess around with that and see what that was all about. And of course, archive it, because what the heck is the point of me having these, this stuff if uh, nobody else has access to it? As I look for the cap kit that I ordered, there we go. And of course, Eep! So we have uh, Eep stickers now. I don't have a way to really sell these, but um, at VCF Midwest, I'll be handing out a few of them. So there you go. Eep. I love that little design I made. Simple but effective. Hey, Bruce! It's Bruce! From the other thing. How's it going, Bruce? Bruce is going to watch me swear at the analog board. Uh, yours is in a cardboard sleeve. Interesting, Adam. How much was it? A girl will never tell. Um, wrong again. <laughs> uh, Bruce has been ousted by himself. How dare he? Anybody want these like uh, fireball candies? Sean, Bruce. Oh, they're not my thing. And every time we order capacitors, they include one or two in the box, and I'm just gonna throw them away. <laughs> oh goodness all right so i have those cds i have the recapping kits <clears throat> what else is steve gonna try and, and hawk us well <clears throat> i did these on uh teespring i made uh some designs of stuff to buy and i thought well if i'm selling it i should order a sample for myself and i made some geeky socks now they're gonna come off very dark in the light oh actually that's not too bad i drew all of these little designs myself we have keyboards and videotapes and scuzzy cables and a sega game gear and all sorts of things from my youth and childhood i thought were neat um i would have hoped they would come out a bit more neon but uh they're actually quite nice you know it's printed material you can't you can't expect exact things on here um but i think they came out pretty cool that's on my uh, teespring store i do not make a profit off of these like, I may make like a dollar. So I know the shipping is a little much sometimes and the their prices are what they are, but I really try and set them low because I'm not going to get rich over this, so why even try? Um, if you're a patron, you do get a discount code for this stuff. So hit me up on Patreon or Twitter if you're a patron and you don't know that code. I'll make you, you know about it. Um, but I also had to buy one of my other shirts. Eep! <laughs> that wasn't a good eep. Eep! There we go. So I bought this. I'm going to be wearing that at uh, VCF Midwest. So if you see me wearing an Eep shirt, that's a little dark here. I think it's just the, the camera adjusting. There we go. Pretty good print on this one. So I'm happy with that. So there we go. <laughs> Scuzzy socks? Nah, they're fine. They're fine. And I got uh, I got this Eep shirt too. I liked the, liked the green of it. It's, I'm unfolding it for the first time here. Well, that's nice too. That's a nice Eep. Gotta go eep to it, so there you go. So, yep, those things are on the Teespring store. Um, you know, I make like a, I think a dollar fifty off of the sale, so I'm not gonna strike it rich. But if you do like that stuff, you're welcome to go ahead and purchase one. Uh, I hear the international shipping is a bit insane, so sorry about that. I have no control over that except sending hate mail to those people. So, yes, RetroTech, the recap is done. <sighs> okay, hey, to the shades of base. Now we can start. Now we can start. So. Uh, what we have to do first is discharge this CRT. It was on a few days ago. We don't want to take any risks here. I don't want to have any electrocutions that I don't need to have in my life. You know, there are those required electrocutions, and then there are, you know, the, the non-required ones. Um, mm -hmm, scanning uh, my copy of Macworld Max Secret 6th edition to PDF. Is that one already on Internet Archive, Joe? I know maybe it's the 5th edition that was on the Internet Archive. I just don't want you to... Spend all your time doing something if you don't have to. Buy a shirt for all your friends and family. <laughs> That's all we need. I don't know. Probably help them out. Retrotech, are you like rewound like five minutes or are you just being a, a wise ass? All right, anywho. Uh, <laughs> probably a little bit of both. Uh, let's uh, discharge this thing. <laughs> yeah, Eric figured out. Oh, wow, I'm seeing sparks on the, uh, the anode cap. It's because his machine was plugged into power. When he was uh, when he was trying to discharge it, uh, that'll do it. Now I got my first ever spark. 
discharging a, a CRT from a, a Mac 512K uh, not too long ago. First ever. Uh, those don't have a bleeder resistor, so we shouldn't see a spark here. Hopefully not. But, um, yeah. Oh, being a, being a wide ass. We, we, oh, see, that's always fun. Um, we, we know that's what you do, retro -tech. This is always the fun part. Just like feeding it under here without like scraping it or, you know, having it go rogue and destroying everything you hold dear. Oh, come on. Oh, this is the fun part. Yeah, this one is extra. Um, has a bit of, bit of a, um, oh, what's the word I want to use? A goo to it? It's a bit goopy. There we go. All right. Well, damn it. See what happened there? I slipped and hit the thingamajig. See, once I got in there, it was fine. There we go. Well, don't think I heard a, a pop, but... There we go. So we've discharged the thing safely. Hopefully, maybe, kind of, sort of, maybe. All right. And uh, yeah, that's not doing anything. Oh yeah, this is the one with the uh, the very annoying clips. Oh, that was a reflection. I thought I saw sparks. I'm like, what the hell? That makes no sense. All right, that's one undone. Nope, it redid itself. I always feel like I'm gonna break the damn thing. I know I, I can't. I'm probably not that strong, but there we go. All right. The pain in the bit. Pain in the bit. I'm gonna copyright that. Sounds like a, a Joe type of expression because him and I have the same brain, <laughs> whether we like it or not. <laughs> there was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. All right, so now we could disassemble this. And I don't think there's a specific uh, recap guide for this model uh, online yet so that'd be something that we could contribute to uh, society maybe huh thingamaboob there you go joe <laughs> why did i put all this tape on here oh there are screws <laughs> that explains why uh why did i not just put them in the little ziploc bag what's wrong with me i have i have uh oh maybe i didn't know where they are now i know Yes, that's why I was making sure my hand did not touch any of the metal or the plastic because I am paranoid about that. And if you're not, that's fine with you, but I'm a bit squeamish, that sort of stuff. And that's just the way I, the ways I ams. What the heck did I put this much tape on here for? Oh, that's why. I think I was going to secure the screws there and we're going to reuse this electrical tape. It's expensive. <laughs> I don't like that pull, Joe. <laughs> that implies a lot of things. Wait, we only have one screw here? Did the other one fall off? Oh, that's fantastic. Do my jobs and, and try and keep all the parts and bits together. And sometimes they just want to lose themselves. I get it. It's more exciting when you're missing a screw. Oh no, wait, there's just one one screw that goes there. That should be okay. As Steve talks to himself for the next five hours. Live on YouTube. Talk about the quickest way to a broken heart. That's when you uh, you accidentally let the vacuum out of the CRT after you break the neck. That's the quickest way to a broken heart. And I've never done that before. Knock wood. All right, my, there's always screws loose. All right, so I actually have to figure out how to remove the analog board from this particular model. There are these little plastic clips, which I see. Are there any screws holding this in? No, not that I could see anyway. Um, oh no, wait, there's this hole. Huh. 
Well, this is gonna be fun. Oh, there we go. That's right, I did take this apart already. <laughs> that's because I had to identify it, and we'll explain why in a moment. Oh, that's right, this has to come out of there very carefully because it's soldered onto the board because Apple was too cheap on this model to give you a connector. It was a Mac Classic after all. Corners had to be cut. Uh, where's the uh, other tool? There it is. So I do have to undo the ground cable here from the chassis. Otherwise, I cannot move the analog board too much. Because unlike the Macintosh 128, 512, and Plus, there goes my tool, uh, where they have the yoke on a socket so you can actually remove it from the analog board. This is soldered. Mac Classic has a curved face. What corners? What are you talking about? Have, have plus, what do you mean? They're all, all, most of the machines are curved. I think the originals aren't, but. The SE, Classic, etc. Connectors are overrated. <laughs> Soldered the floppy drive ribbon cable to the motherboard. My goodness, Adam, that sounds like fun. Tell us how you really feel about that. Okay. All right, so the analog board is free. I'm going to carefully place it over here. And then carefully move this system over there so I don't hurt it any further. Alrighty. Uh, what? What? Red leader? What? You said cut corners. I don't know what I said five seconds ago. It's a live stream. I don't even know what I where I am. What I have for breakfast, etc. People think I'm joking. But <laughs> All right, so let's continue here. You didn't miss much. We're just getting the analog board off of here. We just removed it off of the system. And we are removing these little plastic clips. The trick to this is to push the pin in the middle. Push the pin in the middle. I can't talk today. Um, and uh, it loosens them and you can remove them. Now, they are plastic, they can break. You do want to be careful. And if you break them, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure you could find another way to fasten everything together. So I'm gonna put these in that little Ziploc bag so I do not lose them. I did not have Fruit Loops for breakfast, Retro Techie. You know I had breakfast with you. Actually, you wouldn't know because you stood me up. Okay. There we go. Removed our protection thing with Jake. I'm getting badoops here because my phone was not in silent mode, and now it is. So no more badoops for me. Sorry, Joe. Um, jumper P1 in place. Okay. 120 volt machine. That's what I expect. This is for a Macintosh classic as the thumbnail and the title should state on the video. I'll move this over to the side. Now there are a few revisions of this board and the only way to tell about the revision of the board, well maybe if you have a keen eye you can figure it out, but the model number is here which is right against the CRT. So you have to discharge the CRT, remove this, remove that from the neck board, and take the whole darn thing out just to read the number. And of course, when I read that on the previous live stream, I figured out I did not have a recapping kit for this. This analog board is part number 630-0395. I did not have a recapping kit for it. Thankfully, I was able to order one from console five. I fixed it, Adam, and gotta do a refresh. And uh, if you go to console5.com, they have a few of them. Uh, this one matches that model number 630-0395. This is also going to work for the 630-0560 apparently. Uh, it actually has a, a note on here. Note the 10UF cap for capacitor 3 will be type Nichicon KL. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to make a recapping guide for this because I don't think I have one for this particular model. What type of diagnostics tools do you have? Too many. Too many. 
Um, 20 years of tinkering around with this stuff? No, wait, I'm sorry. 25 years of tinkering around with this stuff? Maybe 30? I don't know. That, that, that works. Um, really, not too much. A multimeter, um, a desoldering gun, a hot air station is really all you need to do some basic work. Now, if you get into troubleshooting, you're going to need some software and maybe an oscilloscope and stuff like that. I don't even have an oscilloscope, but I managed to get by so far. All right. So, what, did I, did I, did I mix up the uh, renaming of the title? Because I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't, I don't know. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, that says re well, my window is too zoomed in to understand recap it. yeah you know what it's close enough all right so <laughs> oh my goodness what are we doing today steven i don't know keep talking all right let's try and get a, a good picture of this before photo here of course you can't just yank your phone over there steven it's charging you silly silly person you all right, so let's try and take some pictures here without my head blocking the light. These are always interesting to take because the phone leaves a nice shadow over where the computer is. And let's make sure we're not blocking any capacitors by holding these wires in a certain way. And I think that's probably the best we're going to get. All right, perfect. Talking about computers, I have no idea what they are, so that's fine. It's my world, yes, and I have the bad habit of talking to myself now, too. Very upset the second camera is not working. Let me just try and, and mess with those settings here. Yeah, that's annoying, because uh, you could do usually a picture-in-picture -picture type deal. Uh, let's see if the above camera wants to work today, because at least we could we could use that, huh? If it's plugged in, that is. There we go. Maybe that'll want to work. At least we'll have something. Above camera. Go! Uh. <laughs> Not plugged in. Oh, God. Do a live stream, Steven. That's fine. You could just do them spur of a moment. Man, nothing ever goes wrong on your live streams. They're all so fancy, and then none of your video is going to be laggy, except it is because OBS, USB 3 cards, and Mac Pro from 2012, 2009, rather. Yeah, probably William. Because the second I go upstairs, I forget about everything. Okay, so <laughs> we have at least two cameras here. Uh, I'm going to switch to that in a moment, and hopefully we'll get a better picture here. The, I have to zoom in a little bit. Sorry, folks. This uh, live stream is uh, completely crazy. And not the crazy you expect. More of like the... This guy needs to... Uh, you know... Shut up, crazy. Uh, so laggy. So laggy. All right, well. We're going to do the best we can. How about that? We're all here for it. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, cool. So we have this here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get a piece of paper. And I'm going to just make a very rough note of where the capacitors are, their values, etc. Uh, because this particular one, I don't believe there's a recapping guide on lineup. Um, I'm more entertained than TV. Well, thank you. Thank you. I do have uh, tech step related stuff to, to do. Uh, I got a very kind donation of some chips and such that are replacement ROM packs for the tech step. And I will be focusing a video on that whenever I get the chance to. Where's the extra paper? I had printed printer paper. Printer paper. Wee! Printer paper. Where's the paper? Who has the paper? What happened to the paper? Who took the paper? Why is the paper? How is the paper? It's probably paper over here. Uh, 
I found some paper. We're all good. Now, through the magic of Steve drawing things poorly, we will have a recapping guide. Oh, did I steal the markers that I had? Look, I have brand new markers. Hi, there's my forehead. And look, I even pulled the ring off of the, uh, the thingamajig. Uh, that's what happens when you get old people, you go crazy just randomly. <laughs> uh, uh. Don't worry, this live stream will go private after I'm done. Nobody will ever know it existed. Marker time. Oh, this will be fun to get actually uh, trace it. How about that? Look at it fits on the paper. Wow. Can't even draw a straight line even when I'm tracing. I swear I am not intoxicated. I promise. Steve had one too many reefer caps, if you know what I mean. There we go. Perfect. Be the paper. Be the paper. All right, so we're just going to draw a happy little connector over here. This is just for my own reference. I'm going to go back and we'll replace all the things anyway in Photoshop. All right, so the big old flyback guy. Uh, we have this little dealie over here. Got this uh, happy little flyback over here with this thingamajig over here and that dealie over there and that dealie over there. We're going to say flyback. So now if we get confused, we know where we are. We put some happy little caps here. Happy little caps. And I'm sorry for the crudity of this model. It is not to scale. All right, so we have the uh, power connector over here. We also have the power switch right next to it. All right, and we got uh, two big old capacitors here. And the negative side is there. And the negative side is there on that one. How about that? Now the fun part is, I don't exactly know which caps uh, they gave me to replace, so I have to hop on their website right now. And this ends in uh, 0395. There it is. And there is the listing here. So we have a list of capacitors. So I have to find those on the board. Ugh. Fun. All right. So this one is 1 and 13. All right. So this is number 1. That's number 13. And uh, this is, oh, interesting. Some of them are labeled CF, and some of them are labeled CL, and some of them are labeled CP. Bruce, can you tell us the, the reasoning behind this madness? Or do you just want me to look like an idiot? Because I'm, I'm happy either way. Either way. All right, so it looks like uh, we have some other doodads over here, but right over here is another capacitor, and that is CL2. Since we have a lot of space, I'm just going to label this one like that. And we have the negative over there. Capacitors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should have made me laugh so hard. <laughs> it's, uh, this is going to move my head over there. So you, there we go. <clears throat> Steve's face is blocking his own crotch. Well, that sounds bad. It is. All right, so we're going to put another capacitor over here. And that one is a negative on that side. And this is CP11. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, let's see. What else? CF3 we have to replace. What about the one next to it? CP37? Yep. All right. So there are two little caps right next to that. One there. One there. Oh, this is going to be a fun job, I could tell. So this one is... Uh, Oh, yeah, that's right. So that's 
plus negative, and this one is plus negative, and this is CP37, and the one next to it is CP3. 3PO, 3PO. Inductor and capacitor. Well, they can't all be inductors because they have values that look like capacitors, unless I'm just an idiot. That's very true. Okay, uh, CP5 and CP4 are next, and they're a little bit south of this one. Now I know why no one's ever done a guide like this before. It is time-consuming and tedious. All right, so that is... Uh, oh, I am confused. Huh. Well, I guess I could go by the values here, because this has a label right next to it, and I don't know which one it's referring to. It's this little bundle here. Oh, that's fun. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jay. I will forget that in about 10 minutes, but it is appreciated. Of course, this one has glue all over it. Right exactly where it's supposed to say the value. I'll use my Kiwi's KM601, whatever the heck, and use its very poor flashlight. Oh, that does not help at all. 4725, yeah, I guess that does help a little bit. That one's 50 volts, what is that one? CP5 is one microfarad 50, okay. So this is CP5. And the one next to it is 4725, that's CP4, okay. Because there's also a CP20, which is not on this list, so that must be like, oh yeah, there it is, it's sandwiched in, it's just hiding. Right there, one of these little yellow doodads. Anyway, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm always learning and instantly forgetting. Okay, let's move along with this train wreck here. Ideally, I should have a printed copy of this and going check, 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 but we'll do that afterwards. All right, so right north of this little guy, we have another capacitor, and the negative side is on that dealy there. The positive side is there just for consistency's sake. There we go. And that number is right under the glue. Or snot, or whatever it is. Well, Joe, usually they just label them C. But in this one, they just decided not to for whatever reason. This is the first one I'm seeing this detailed. This one's actually labeled CF3. That actually has a value of... The, oh, this is going to be confusing. There's a CP3 and a CF3. Watch, you're going to mess this up, I'm sure. The CF3 is 1,000 microfarad, 16 volts. So, I really need to pay attention here. <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm doomed. All right, so a little bit to the left here. There's another capacitor. And this one is negative at the top, positive at the bottom. And that is labeled CP31. Make sure I know that's a P, not an F. And right above that is another capacitor. And that is CF4. Okay. And right next to that is CF2. This is going to be a pain in the butt. I can tell you that. Look at that. There's another little capacitor, CF1, just hiding out there. And the negative is on that side. Positive is on that side. Oh, boy. Polyester. Uh, Mike's uh, Mike is a bit under the weather. He's alive. He's not feeling too hot. So he's probably resting. And, you know, if I wasn't feeling that well, would I want to have me on the TV going, ah, is a failure? Probably not. Um, all right, so then we have a forest of capacitors right here. All right, look at that forest. That's fine. That's just perfectly fine. Oh, gosh. I can't even see these. All right, well, this is going to be fun. So right next to there is the speaker connector. I'm going to draw that just for reference. 
And then right next to that is a power connector of some type. And then we have three capacitors like this. One, two, three, and there's another one next to that one. Another one on top of that one. Another one over there another one there and another one there and then there's a bunch of other doohickeys here I'm just going to fill them in just so I don't confuse them when I'm looking at photos later on but yeah big forest of capacitors there hey red leader thank you very much for the super chat there eep happy little flyback are we in a Bob Ross recap stream late joke had to resolve payment issue <laughs> No worries, Red Leader. Thank you very much for the super chat. Eep, very much appreciated. And oh, I have, a, I have the Eep sticker now. I can just do the like the Eep. That won't get old. Uh, yes, happy little flyback. I hope it's happy. Otherwise, we'll have some issues. Uh, da, 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 da. They all seem to be in New Jersey. Probably the parts of New Jersey that are way far away from me. That's like when some somebody's like, oh, that's just in New York, and then it's like in Rochester. It's like yeah, that's like a day's drive. <laughs> oh goodness. Doohickey. Doohickey. All right, so let's continue. We have a speaker here. Oh, we have a little baby cap just hiding around here. Trying to hide away from us. It's a plus on that side, negative on that side. That is... Oh, they even have a little arrow pointing to it. That was nice of them. That is CP34. Well, this is going to be fun to figure out. Okay, we're just going to put the negative dots here. I will put the positive dots in the uh, finalized guide here, but at least this will help me keep my sanity somewhat, <laughs> somewhat during this stream. And you're saying, Stephen, why do you make these guides? Because without it, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, this is CP10, and this one is CP9. We have uh, CP6. And this is LP4. That's what that is. These all sound like Star Wars droid names. CP7, where are you? And this one's CP12. That's CP6. We already got that. This is CP36. And we have CP8 right next to that power connector. And then CP2 right next to that. So, those aren't the caps you're looking for. All right, no worries, Thomas. See you later. All right, let's see. How many capacitors do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. 25. Let's see how many we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. <laughs> Great, we're missing three. How could that be a possibility? Because we're silly. And I, I see two that are hiding just in play in sight by this uh, big heat sink doohickey that looks like you know something out of Lord of the Rings so we have one hiding there and one hiding there and that's negative yep and that is uh, what is that CL3 and the other one is CL1 Okay, one more. One, oh, it's like a scavenger hunt for idiots. There's one, <laughs> I found it. All right, so this one is right thereabouts and that is CP35. And that is negative on that side, positive on that side. So let's double check here. Oh, this is LL1. 
All right, so let's just double check our list here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. We have a bingo. Excellent. Imagine RTG having witty comebacks. Yes. Oh goodness. Where's my uh, water bottle? Cut the chatter, Red Two. Look at the size of that thing. Negative, didn't go in. Just impacted on the surface. All right, so again, this is a color classic analog board. Apple computer s poor I believe that probably stands for Singapore. Serial number on this, just for the heck of it, is SG1109LX03K4. And the model number again is 630. In fact, we should write that down, shouldn't we, Stephen? So the speaker goes here. And uh, this little guy is uh, 6300-0395. Perfecto. An artist signed their work. Yep. Cool. So now we can start ripping the caps off of this thing and we know where they go. Well, at least that's the plan. We'll see how much uh, of a fool we make out of ourselves later. But generally speaking, looking at this board, it doesn't look like the capacitors have leaked, which is a little concerning because, well, no, I take that back. That looks like some leakage. That doesn't look like some flux, but I could be wrong. Um, because if there's that weird hourglass shape going on, then that's kind of frustrating. This all looks like flux, but what the flux do I know? <laughs> Ah. Twist off the caps with large pliers. I like your spirit there, Adam. Never change. I'm going to put this on the fridge. There we go. Now comes the fun part, removing all these suckers. Now, last time I did this by hand, which was very stupid. I should have used the tool I bought for this specific type of work, which is a desoldering gun. Um, or some people like to call it an um machine. I call mine Claris because it reminds me of Claris the dog cow. And yes, I name my tools weird things, but in reality, that's really the only one I name it. I'm gonna put this somewhere where I'm not gonna accidentally burn it. So what I'm going to do is use the desoldering gun, flip this board over, and just start whipping these caps off. Now we know where they go, and if we want to play around with them later, um, I'm going to put them in a little bin, if I have one here, um, and we can play the game of, are they within the value they said they were supposed to be in? It's such a fun game. You could try it at home, you could bore your friends. And I'm going to regret this immediately after I start. That one's too big to do. Both of those are too big to do. Won't even fit around there. See, I think that one's there. This is this is also part of the fun. Like, oh, it looks like it goes there, but I'm not sure. Ground planes are fun. Oh, look at that. We have our first cap off the board. Looks fine. And this one is right next to that guy. Should, maybe. No. Wait. No. Wait. No. Maybe. No. Wait. Sure. It's only solder after all. It's 
one's a little bit fidgety. Come on. Oh, did I grab the wrong... I decided the wrong leg because I'm an idiot. That's all right. We'll put that one. In fact, we'll do it now so I don't forget. Because otherwise, about, oh, an hour and 45 minutes from now. Like, why isn't this thing turning on correctly? I put all the caps back. Oh, wait. Yes, it is more like a moof machine. Moof. That's why it's called Claris. He gets the joke, everybody. Give that man the $10,000. All right, where's the, the flux that I was just yelling at about 40 minutes ago? <laughs> How long have we been going? Are we at Grandma's yet? I need to use the restroom. fan thing we do. There we go. Whoa. Well, that was fun. We're going to turn off that soldering iron. Didn't hurt anything in that box, thankfully. And we're going to move this away from where my fat hands can mess it up. Well, that's my wife's gift to me. She bought one of these fans. She thought it was one. It was a pack of two. Bonus fan. Got a fan for myself. Don't care what the hell color it is. It blows air. It works. Anywho, let's move past me almost stabbing myself with a hot starter. All right and uh, continue with this train wreck of a stream. Okay, so we are capacitor one out of a billion here. This one is right there. I think that's where that is. Thank you very much, AMC. I appreciate it. 65 Scribe is amazing as well. I love their uh, their videos. Always tell an interesting story. This one kind of doesn't want to come out. Why not? Glue holding it in? No, no, it's just one of these cranky ones. Hey, Mike's alive. How you feeling, buddy? Where can you donate? Donate what? If you want to support me financially, you could do so via Patreon, or there's a PayPal link on my website, mac84.net. Um, or if you want to send me crap, I'm quite selective because I'm, as you can see, I have a lot of crap in the background. However, any uh, financial support is greatly appreciated. It helps me buy tools and parts and materials to help doing these crazy repairs. So there you go. And I hear a cricket. Excellent. Uh, I just did also enable YouTube membership, but I will warn you, I literally enabled that like 20 minutes before I started streaming. I have no idea how it works or how I'm going to integrate stuff into it yet, so... Be warned. <laughs> what? Steve doesn't know what he's doing? Surprise, surprise. All right. Uh, so CP3 we're about to remove again with CP37. Do you prefer Patreon over Super Chats? Well, Patreon certainly uh, takes less of a cut because I'm grandfathered in. Without poo-pooing YouTube too much, oh, heck, why do I care? Um, they really bleed you dry. 
So they take uh, 40%. 40 percent. 40 percent. And I'll say it again. 40 percent of everything I make. So if you send me ten dollars, thank you for the six dollars and probably less after taxes. Certainly less after taxes. <laughs> Thank you for keeping the community alive. Well, thank you. It's not just me. A lot of awesome people out there are doing fantastic stuff, so I appreciate it. Everyone's enthusiasm in this hobby keeps us going, I think. And it's one of those things where you just learn from each other. And there you go. Look, an orange capacitor. It's a 10 marker fire 25. I should have started noting these values. Ah! Idiot, Steven. Imbecile. Idiot! Because the recap kits often give you slightly different values. Well, I didn't go too far here. At least I can start noting some of these down. I need something other than a marker. Because then I'm, there's a pen. Excellent. Stop paying your taxes. <laughs> Duh. Oh, God. I'd be dead. Hey, Elemento, how's it going? Sorry, I was rambling off there. And was not making a lick of sense... For anybody who just tuned in there. This stream has sort of been a, a cluster from the start. But we all good here. 10 microfarad, 25 volts. Alright. Now the other ones. Oh boy. So this, is, this is a fat one. Let's look at the picture we took. Oh, Mike. You don't have to do that, buddy. Eep. Thank you very much for your super chat, Mike. You certainly do not have to do that, but I will certainly accept the money and run to the bank and cash it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That's very kind of you. Eep, go subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack. He doesn't drop capacitors as nearly as much as I do. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's a freaking comedy of errors here, man. Anybody who's new to the channel and watching this, just... Abandon all hope. Get the hell out of here. All right, this is 250 volts, 4.7 microfarads. Interesting. Interesting choice there, Apple. Uh, <laughs> Love you, Mike. Even if you say I don't deserve those things. Love you anyway. Okay, CL3 was supposed to be a 1 microfarad 50, and I think that's what it was. So, 1 microfarad 50 volt. And CL1 was a 47.25. Let's just confirm. I just like to double check when you're removing these off of these boards, because a lot of the times uh, their values will change in the recapping kit, just because of what is available today. These are all common values. So I don't think that would be a problem. But uh, one microfarad 50. And then Yes, this is a 10 microfarad 50. So they're replacing that with a with a 10 microfarad 25. CP3. But this one was a 50. Interesting. Well, that's all right. That's what these places do. And that's totally fine, as long as we keep that in mind. Wait, no. That one was... Which one did I do? CP3. Oh, no. CP3. That's the orange one. Where'd the orange one go? There it is. Oh, that was 1025. I'm an idiot. <laughs> How do I uncross something out? All right, so then the other one was CL1. That's the 1050. Okay. I'm just making war work for myself. So one, two, three, four, we removed. One, two, three, four. That looks about right. And one, two, three, four. Perfecto. All right, let's continue on with this show. Sorry about that. Wasn't paying attention to the chat. What are we doing? Who are you people? Why are you in my basement? Um, <laughs> thanks for the $6, Mike Myers, Texas. I will take anything. Maybe. Okay. Oh, Red Leader, don't worry about it. It's not your fault. YouTube is a conglomerate. 
Slightly off topic. Does the original Mac Dash keyboard have any known issues? Not really. I mean, everything could break, but besides the keyboard cable, you never know. Oh, Red Leader, don't worry about it. Honestly, the, like the, everything is taxed. PayPal is taxed. Patreon is taxed. Google is taxed. YouTube is taxed. Everything. But technically, probably to get the least amount of crap taken out of it, the PayPal link on my website is probably the shortest way. If you go to paypal.me forward slash Mac84TV, if you don't add the TV there, it's somebody else, but that's, you know, the thing. Anyway, let's stop yapping about money. Start ripping caps off things. So this one's right next to the flyback. Oh, that's a stinky one. I think we got our first stinker. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a stinker here. Let's see if we get the microscope working. Oh boy. Mm. Uh I wouldn't be so sure of that, Jeremy. Everybody has to do one of those 1099s here in the good old US of A these days, so you'll get something taken out of it eventually, trust me. I haven't looked at them. And let's see if the microscope camera wants to vec today. It does, maybe. Maybe. And we're going to try and get this cap in focus. Oh my god, it's a nasty one. Look at the bottom of this capacitor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Eep! Thank you very much, Elemento. 60% of $19.84 is $11.90. The Mac Clock the Mac Classic was on sale November 1990. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> oh, Elemento. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh. Eep, I still have uh, those stickers I got to send out to you. They are on my desk in an envelope, and I'm a terrible person. I'm sorry, but to make it up for you, here's a beautiful cap. Should I include this in the package, too? <laughs> I think you have enough of those. Oh, this is disgusting. Yes, I hope Mike feels better. He is uh, in a tight spot right now. Hope he gets better real soon. <laughs> Mike, I'll give you this. This will this will cure you up. <laughs> oh, that one's going right in the trash. We're not, let's let's measure it. Let's let's just be fun here. No, we have to be serious. This is the internet. You cannot have fun here. How dare you? Let's uh, pull out the old multimeter probes here and turn on. Oh, that thing still stinks. I can smell it from here. Oof. Let's see what this reads. <laughs> I'm very curious. Oh, goodness. So we're going to go to capacitance mode here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Another super chat. Eep. Thank you, Mike. You don't have to do that, sir, but that is very much appreciated. If you give a hundred more ten dollars super chats, can I finally get a five twelve ke? I've told you, Mike. If I see one, I'll let you know. Mike has an obsession with a five twelve ke. I've offered to give him a five twelve k with a sticker on it, but no, he wants a five twelve ke. All right, let's see what this pork pastor is spitting out. Takes a little while. 220 microfarads and it's supposed to be a 220 <laughs> well all right something is not quite right about the cap anyway so in the garbage it goes <laughs> oh goodness 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 that's funny I would have not expected that. All right, let's get the rest of these uh, sad caps off of here. We have sad caps. Looking at these sad caps. They'll give you a sad Mac if you have sad caps. I'm going to release my album at VCF Midwest. And all of you are required to buy it. And of course, I forgot to note the dumb values on the piece of paper like I was yelling at myself to do 
not five minutes ago. <laughs> oh, goodness. So that, that big one there is J12 that we took, not J12, we are talking about CP. That was CP11, and I believe that's a 200 microfarad, uh, what is it, uh, yeah, 220, 25 volts. And this little guy here was CP37, and that should be 1 microfarad, 50 volts, and it is. Just want to be sure. Sorry, just to catch up on the chat here. Boop, 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 boop. Scrolling up. <laughs> well, you know, Jeremy, there's not any shortage at all of those cases. So I hope you could find one. They're all over places, I'm sure. Yes, Patrick, I understand the multimeter that I'm using is not uh, the true representation of the life of the capacitor. That is an excellent point. An ESR meter is one of those things that's on my bucket list. I don't have one right now. They're a little pricey, but uh, I don't need one necessarily. But uh, yeah, good idea. I got that card reader super fast. Which one was that, William? I completely forgot that part of the conversation. Or maybe you're following up from something else. Uh, da, 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 da. Just got a couple of ESR meter kits and built them. Oh, very sweet. Cool. That sounds awesome, Patrick. In fact, uh, Patrick, if you want to go ahead and uh, put the link to that where you ordered one in the chat, that'd be cool. So Mike wants a 512KE because it was his very first Mac that he owned in high school in the 90s and he bought with his own money. It's not that it's the best. It's just special to me. And it's barely better than 128 and a plus is better. I know that feeling, Mike. I know. It's it, there's no logic behind some of these things. Oh, USB three to write images. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's right. Good. Happy to hear. All right, let's get uh, more caps off of this thing while we have some of our sanity. Got sad caps. Come on, Joe, sing the chorus. <laughs> This just makes this job so much easier. All right, that is a one microfarad 50. So far, so good with most of these. Let's see how this big boy is. This is CF3. Right on the ground plane there. Lovely. Takes a little bit more of uh, oomph to get out of there. So 1,000 microfarad, 16 volts. One thousand sixteen, excellent. Whether you want them to or not, the album exactly. Try to kill me with a fork. <laughs> Two different suppliers, the same company. One is in Australia, the other is here in the U.S. California. Very cool, Patrick. Yes, put those links in there. I'm very curious to check that out. All right, so the next cap here, I can actually read these values before I rip them off, some of them. 6.3, is that correct? You know, may, well, yes. 6.3... Well, I'm going to take its word for it, because this is cut off here on the label. So that's 1,000, 6.3. 6.3 volts. Let's take that one off next. It's always hard on the other side to see where these caps go. Because you don't want to be a goof and make a mistake like I did just before. Then you have to go and touch things up, but I'm pretty sure that one is there. And it's right below there. Mike, it's good you can't smell right now because some of these are nasty. This one looks a beaut, though. But these are getting up there in age, so time to remove the heck out of them. Don't make me repeat the song. 
<laughs> you really have to recap your Mac. Otherwise, Mac 84 is going to sing that song again. Don't, don't let him do it. Don't make him do it. This is 47 microfarad, 25 volts. Alrighty. Thank you very much for the links, uh, Patrick. I'm going to click on that and save that later. Oh, $100. That's not too bad. I just want to sing. <laughs> These caps will all be yours one day. From value 47 to something, something. I thought it has something there. I failed you. All right, that goes there, that goes there. So let's guess if this is right. All right. That's a 22016. Alrighty. And then there's a big old one here. Let's do that one next. This one, so far, the caps aren't too terrible, which is a little concerning. The one was pretty nasty, but I would expect more based on what this machine was doing, but you never know. So this is a 47025, and that came out of uh, CP31, I think. Wait, crap, what did I do? Yeah, no, that's the one. CP, CP, CF4, rather. C F fours, yeah, there it is. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, leader. <laughs> I try not to. All right, um, we have this little one, C P five and C P four with glue on it. Oh, that's gonna be fun to take off. But thankfully, there's this little hole on the board there, so I could better guess where that goes. Is it? Up and down and all around. Well, that's gonna be a pain in the butt, actually. Never mind. So there's two next to it and one in the middle. So two. That's. Uh, uh. Oh, this is not fun. This is not fun at all. We're going to try this one at least. Maybe. No. <laughs> this is a pain in the butt. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I generally do not accept analog board recapping. Because I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's too much. Too much. I don't want to do it. I don't know if that's it or not. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess correctly. You have chosen wisely. Oh boy. CP four. It's a little uh 4725. Speculate why a Power Mac 9600 freezes on boot for the first few minutes, then it works fine after that. Till the next day when it does again. Ask Tinker different, no reply for two weeks. Uh, Red Leader, I can't exactly determine that by not looking at the thread. Does it do it with a different hard drive? Does it do it with a different battery? Does it do it while wearing socks? Does it do it while eating locks? I mean, these are all questions that you have to ask yourself. Is the power supply uh, spitting out good voltage? How do the caps look? Those are, those are the things I would ask. 
Is that the right one? Or did, I, did I do bad? Did I do bad? I think I did bad. There should be a row of those. Oh. Well. I can fix it at least. Alright, so the one with the snot all over it is a one marker for a 50 volt. Then we do have to touch up a little area right above it. So I didn't mean to undo that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We'll touch it up later. <laughs> Managers want to keep me doing things. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Brave Sir Robin. <laughs> uh, yes, Red Leader. Plenty of things to try. Alrighty, I'll fix that little thing later. Because I'm going to have to get the soldering out, iron out anyway. Uh, Alright, looks like we have uh, about a five dozen more caps to go. I don't know. A number. We have a number of caps to go. All right, so this is right under that beefy power connector there. So the fun part is just trying to determine where these caps go from where to where. Oh, this one's going to be a stinky one, I can tell. Oh, God, that smells horrible. Oh. Oh, yeah, that is leaked. Put this in your potato soup. Get it? Because it really. Yeah. Well, look at that. You see that? Yum, dilly yum. Mmm, mmm. Just like mommy used to make them. Mmm. I could taste it. I could taste it. Trash, you go. Wait, 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 wait. We do have to measure it, and we do have to write down the value. <laughs> so that's CP2. That is a 1,035. Let's, let's test it, because we're silly people here. Sorry. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> I'm just curious. I know this is not... The most scientific way, and blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. But here we go anyway. So this is supposed to be a 1,000 microfarad cap. Nine fifty, but of course, it doesn't tell the entire story. And in the garbage it goes. And I bet you the rest of these are going to be just as delicious. My goodness, Patrick. Thank you very much for the super chat. Eep. That is very generous of you. That is a very good down payment on the ESR meter. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you very much. Appreciate the super chat, Patrick. And I, I hope to see you um, at uh, the VCF East Swap Meet in October. That'll be fun. Enjoyed uh, hanging out with you and everyone last year. Well, I'd say uh, at the uh, VCF event. But this is... Oh, this one's stinky, too. Oh. Ooh. And I give you some uh, Eep stickers when I see you. But thank you, Patrick. It's very much appreciated. This one's just as bad as the other one. Ooh. Ugh. You can taste them, really. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, we have cap goo. We have cap goo. We have cap goo. All right, CP8. And this guy is... Uh, 200... Well, 2200. 16 volts. In the garbage that goes. <laughs> Buy another Mac Classic with that money instead. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, VCF East is great. They're having a... Uh, a... Uh, whatchamacallit? Oh, I'm going to take a picture of the back of this. So when Elemento eventually does a guide on one of these, 
he could have uh, he could have some nasty pictures. Uh, very interesting. What brands are the leaky ones? Oh, that's a good question. Ew, I touched the leaky part. Nichicon. Which is a good brand, but when you're like 30, 35 years old, sometimes you get leaky. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I stand by my statement. Oh, goodness. Well, what's this? What's this? Sorry, folks. Why fun to watch a movie, but I'm streaming here. I can't just stop streaming. If she comes downstairs, I'll, I'll have to stop streaming. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the one. Ooh, that got quite a sizzle. Oh, oh, that's terrible. Ugh. I'm not exaggerating, folks. That is nasty. And we're going to take a look at how these have leaked in a moment because they're quite spectacular. Let me just click on the little thing here and remind you to smash the like button as gently as you would like. We have uh, about 38 people watching. We are an hour and 34 minutes into the stream. So thank you very much for keeping here and... Uh, Watching my horrible reactions to these horrible smelling capacitors. Oh, you could just, you could smell, and there's a, there, oh, there is a reaction. Like, see, I, I don't think I can point the microphone towards this, but. It's like a sizzling and a crackling noise. Oh, this one leaked bad. Not as bad as the one with the, the foam coming out of the bottom of it. But take a look at this one. Let's see if we can get that there. Look at those rings around those. It says just leaked all over the board. Oh. They smell like garbage and fish, like fish garbage. And yeah, these have certainly leaked all over the place. Which hopefully is the only culprit on this board. Hopefully we don't have bad components or anything else, because I don't have any of those parts. I'll put this multimeter over here. Um, hold on, I have to respond to the missus. Vacuum tube test equipment. Oh boy, that's fun. Okay, um, three, five more. Nasty too. Oh, Sutek. <laughs> Thank you very much on the super chat. Eep, <laughs> you'd like to contribute to the air freshener. Yeah, the, oh look, this one. This one's bad too. Sorry I didn't switch the view, but I want I want to show you. Look at that. 
Ugh. Nasty. Oh, thank you very much, Rudy's Retro Intel. Scratch and sniff caps. <laughs> Eep, no. We, I am not putting my nose close, closer than I have to, to this stupid one. Wow, that made a big mark on the board there, too. And I started, I, I removed one without writing it down. Let's switch this over here. Oh. So this one was CP6. I mean, I'm sure these are fine. They're the same values that uh, they would give me, but just wanted to be sure. We're going to keep that for a second, because that's a bad one. Um, we already did CP12. Oh, no, that's, yeah, CP6, and then one, two, oh, no, no, I've been writing them all down. Oh, except 36. I didn't do CP36. So what was that? I have to check uh, this here before I lose my mind. CP36 was 2210. Yeah, that sounds right, right. Trust but verify. Sorry, let me, uh... Resist the urge to lick them. I am resisting. Oh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to recapping any of these Power Macs or Intels or anything. <laughs> but Rudy's Retro Intel, thank you. Sutek, thank you. Um, let, let, let me just give you a little preview of the cleanup work that we have uh, to uh, look forward to here. Let me get the microscope in position. Just look at that. Look at that. That is a CP6, that nasty one that we just pulled out. And right above there, CP12. And right over here, another one. And another one. So yeah, we have all sorts of lovely leakage poisoning this poor, poor board. Oh boy. All right. Looks like coffee stains. Well, it ain't smelling like coffee. I'll tell you that. A microfarad 10 volt CP7. Broad you go. <laughs> Tuna coffee. Ugh. You make me vomit, guys. It's disgusting. The freshness of the sea in your morning cup. one here. CP35. Did I even get that? Yes, I did. 34, rather. And this is a 50 microfarad, uh, 50 volt, one microfarad. Ugh. Yeah, this corner got hit the worst. And then we have these two big caps to take off. That's going to be fun. Sorry about the weird angles here, folks. Doing the best I can. is a 470 25 volt I don't even know why I'm saving the other ones in the bin I should just toss them out immediately And that's 
the same. 470 microfarad, 25 volt. In the garbage you go. <laughs> hey Dana, uh, you missed you missed the good one here. I'm gonna show it to you on the camera because you're enjoying yourself. So I'm gonna make you cry. Because that's what friends do. Look at look at this leaky little guy. Look how happy he is and corroded and leaky. Don't worry folks, your compact Max have leaking analog boards too. Go to Joe's Computer Museum, jcm-1.com to <laughs> get them fixed. Oh, Joe's going to hate me. In the trash you go. It waits for a woman of less discriminating tastes. All right, now to get uh, the two big boys off of here. And then we'll have all the caps off. I can smell that cap. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right, so there's that one and that one. Yeah, this is going to take, well, let's see. Yeah, that's not fitting in that nozzle. Turn it off. Now there's a capacitor who can't hold his liquor. How many have he's had? Just the one. He just likes to hold it. Here's to you, blacksmith. I could quote that whole damn movie. All right, so let's try and get uh, the flux. Uh, let's try and get uh, these two big old caps off here, huh? <laughs> it's not eight o'clock yet. As some people don't like that movie. I freaking love it. Maybe it's just because I saw it as a kid and I'm like, oh, train. But, you know, freaking think it's great. All right, let's loosen this big old cap here. And we're going to use up all of our solder wick. See you, Red Leader. Take care. No worries. Thank you, Dana. That is exactly accurate even the video game re uh, thing they did a while back with uh, Christopher Lloyd was pretty damn good I didn't finish the whole thing but from what I played it was fun I was right on a ground plane sucking up all the heat Hey, Ron. <laughs> oh, boy, Ron. Good save there. Uh, hey, how's it going, Ron? Thank you very much. The super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, did I start removing the wrong one? Oh, this is a leaky one, too. I think. Oh. Hard to tell. That's a big old boy, though. The chonker of a of a cap there. <laughs> yeah, Clint Eastwood didn't wear the didn't wear this or didn't look like this. Oh boy. I'm very much looking forward to VCF Midwest. Ron of Ron's computer videos will be there, and so will I, and so will a bunch of fancy, awesome people in this chat, including Eric. And some other fancy awesome people that were here earlier, but may have uh, run away when they saw me and they started singing. These are big bulky caps too. 250 volts. Don't wanna don't wanna sit on that one by mistake. Two two zero. 
250. The other one is probably the same. Yes, it is. 220, 250. I, I doubt these actually had gone bad, but you never know. So we have the cap kit. Might as well replace all of them. And that's it. They're all they're all out of the board. Let's switch the camera here so you can actually see it better. There you go. Two PowerBook 500 batteries. That is probably something I will always just give to other people and be like, yep, you can do it for me. Because the amount of uh, um, explosion risk there is quite high. And I know how clumsy I am. So I'm removing myself from the equation. <laughs> uh, Eric's Edge did a great video on rebuilding, what was it, PowerBook 100 or something like that? I forget the exact, it was a 100 series, I think. Eric did a great video about that. Check that out. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is clean this up a little bit. Uh, where's the Alki Hall? Where's it I put the Alki Hall? I probably put it in the wrong there. <laughs> Dana, 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 this is your phone, 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 and your TV, me, me, me. I look at you and I go out of focus. Oh, yeah. All that cap crud off of this board. Oh, which is saying something. Because there's a lot on there. Ew. <laughs> perfect sink. Perfect sink. Perfect sink. I uh, was uh, hanging out. My uh, dad came over this weekend, this past weekend, and uh, he was helping me around with some electrical projects around the house. And uh, in the evening, I, I put on uh, The Brain That Wouldn't Die, uh, Mystery Science Theater. I don't know, was it? Yeah, but that was the, the Mystery Science Theater episode. And, oh, my God, we were laughing ourselves stupid. <laughs> oh, goodness. Such great stuff. Both the Rift Track stuff and the Mystery Science Theater stuff. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Alright, so I'm just cleaning up some of the... A lot of this looks like flux, and it probably is. But there are certain areas that could use a bit of a cleaning, and that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Dickweed! <laughs> I'm like the wind, baby. Oh, breach hole, I'll die. Huh, even had an underlined. Now, there may be a little bit of cap juice between these uh, holes here, but I, I cannot reach them. So, hopefully... It'll be okay. I'm cleaning it the best I can. Sorry for the squeaks. <clears throat> Thick, make run fast. <laughs> Slab, hard, hard. Jeez. Oh, what is that? A uh, laser blast, Dana? I always forget the, the name of it. I always forget the name of that one. They have a less tendency to go boom. Well, that's good, Eric. Oh, goodness. All right, so we got all those nasty caps off. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Perfecto! <laughs> Space Mutiny. That's, is that it? I think that's the one. Oh, God, such a terrible movie. Great to great to laugh at, but terrible. Like some of those movies are so bad that even with all the jokes, between the jokes, it's like, oh god, this sucks. 
Uh, Adam, I already have. I already have one. I mean, if you really don't want it, sh 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 sure. But try and sell it as like a bundle. Maybe some uh, crazy person will uh, will want it. I think I only have... Only. <laughs> well, I mean, when you compare it to the Image Rider 2. I only have two of the uh, the original Apple Image Riders. But I also have the wide one. I actually have two of those now, thanks to uh, one arriving broken from Fleabay. So, got that going for me. Space Beauty. <laughs> Ice Pirates. <laughs> you should totally do that, Adam. I'm sure you have the cable for it. Uh, some of the back here of where this uh, th those leaky caps were is pretty freaking nasty. I mean, I know some of this is flux. But also, some of it is not flux. And it's nasty. Alright, so let's clean up that little oopsie I did before, which should be right around there. So I started to desolder something that I shouldn't. Now it's all fixed. Yay! Nobody will know of my horrible mistake. Flint iron stack. Fridge large meat. <laughs> oh, goodness. Bulk vendor huge. <laughs> uh, somebody, if there's, if I'm sure there's one already, but somebody needs, just has, like, needs a website of all those. So freaking funny. I'm sure that listing on IMDb is just like 90% of those quotes. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so we don't really have to clean up too many of these solder joints, uh, at least the ones that we're replacing. I might go back and fix some of the others for like flyback and stuff. But for now, this should be pretty straightforward. So we have our new caps here. <laughs> of course! Of course, Dana. <laughs> of course. I'm gonna click on that. There we go. Dirk hard pick. <laughs> Brick hard meat. <laughs> Buff hardback. <laughs> Blast thick neck. <laughs> Dana, how did we not find this before? <laughs> I'm bookmarking that. Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh boy. Alright, so we're ripping open the cap kit here now. It's capacitor CP3, which is where exactly? CP3 will be a Nichicon KL. So it's going to be a special one. Oh, I, I think I'm at uh, all the VCF East until I die. Or. Unless I have a prior obligation, but they are so fun. They're a, they're an excellent way to uh, lose a lot of money and have fun doing it. So I'm just curious. I want to try and find this capacitor that it's mentioning. So it's supposed to be a 10 microfarad 25. But I guess it's a very special type. It's going to be a Nichicon KL. I guess due to the ESR or something like that. I'm going to guess. There it is. Well, that's a 5010. What is this? It's a 
Oh, that's a 50 microfarad instead of a 10. Okay, that's fine. But that's why it's helpful to write these things down because sometimes you get different values than what you would expect. And you're like, huh? Let's throw you for a loop. All right, so yeah, CP3 is Nichicon KL. And if we look at it, it says Nichicon. It's a 10 marker for 50 instead of the stock 25. And it says KL and then in parentheses M. And I just want to confirm that that is the only one that we have here because we also have another 10 microfarad 50 volt but that's uh, Rubicon and yeah so this is the one it's a little capacitor there there we go all those best stuff's made in Japan oh Eric I will uh, temporarily make you uh, administrator dealy so you can uh, go ahead and paste the link to your channels. All right, let's put the first cap on the board. We're going to do this special one here so I don't screw it up and get lost with the other ones. There we go. The first cap is away. The first cap is away. There you go. Eric just posted his uh, blog post there. So anybody curious about the battery surgery he did, go ahead and read about it. Trina's here. Hey, Trina. Now I need to know where I put my cutters, flush cutters. Well, it's okay, because I have another pair. Well, <laughs> I did until I moved that pair. Now, now I, I'm in trouble. Oh, boy. Well... It was a nice stream until I misplaced everything. I guess I could just use these cutters close enough. Oh boy, she didn't miss all the fun. She missed all the smells, but I wouldn't necessarily call that fun. Maybe fun for you guys. I, 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 I wasn't having fun. Oh, that's where I put those cutters. Here by the X-Serve. Don't ask why. I'll be right back. Call in about my 840. Yeah, well, it's, the problem is I'm working at that time, Trina. I mean, we, we both work at the same time. I'd, I'd love to hear your response, though. Sir, I have no idea what computer you're talking about. A qua what? Alrighty, so that one is all done. Oh, well, thank you very much, for Trina, for reminding everybody to lightly position your cursor over the like button and gently push it down. It'll make you feel much better, I promise you. And if it doesn't, well, just push it again. As long as you push in an odd number of times, it's fine. Well, these are big honking caps now, aren't they? Let's make sure we get these on correctly. Otherwise, there could be a problem. Things could explode.
just tacking these on, then I will put more solder on them so they actually stay on. But uh, they're a bit awkward because the uh, there we go because they are so bulky. Bulky caps is bulky. Bulky caps are bulky. Steve doesn't use proper English. Can you give a like button tutorial for mobile users? Well, there's a button that looks like this. And then you could sort of tap it with your finger or your nose or any appendage that conducts electricity. And uh, YouTube says, hey, this guy is engaging. Let's give him a few more pennies. And then the U.S. government says, no, you're not allowed to enjoy yourself and make a few more dollars. We need that money. And then you go, but it was only like five dollars. And they go, give us four. And you go, okay. And that's how life works. Tax laws are fun. a perfect join Stephen why'd you mess that up cuz I'm dumb there we go <laughs> Trina it's funny I was looking at that same exact video because the uh, 128k prototype uh, the person found an auction house that was interested and they're saying well we want to we want you to you we want the person who's selling it to come and turn it on for us and I'm like <laughs> no, don't turn that thing on. That Reva cap is going to explode and go sky high. My goodness. That's what happens when you get people at these auction houses who probably are not tech savvy. And it's going to turn it off for us. We need to see it. Like, no, I have pictures and videos. Anybody who's uh, tech savvy about this stuff would appreciate you not turning it on. <laughs> oh, thank you, Drake. I try and keep my finger. All right, I don't know where this cap goes. <laughs> now I'm now I'm lost. Drake distracted me with all his flirting. All right, this is a 470 microfarad 50 volt. Don't we have more of those? Yeah, we have a few 470 25s. So where does this 470 50 go? Oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy. Well, that's discouraging all right let's see what else we got no uh no all right so these are the 470 25 so where the heck does this big old boy go this is a 4750 let's look at the recapping guide that console 5 has on their wiki so this is 470 50 Huh. Oh, it is capacitor number CP2. Huh? Oh, okay, they gave me extra caps because this fits two models. So this one, I'm not using, so that's going to go over there. It's going to confuse me if I keep it around. Because um, this is the, uh, where's the... Where's the paper thingamajig? See, I get all flustered and I forget. Uh, this is the 395. Yeah, okay. Oh, there's plenty of different shapes. No worries, Eric. Take care. I will not lick the caps, I promise you. Yeah, I've never did any of that either, Adam. Yeah, it will, Drake, except uh, on my board, it's uh, not a 470.50. It's a 1,035. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a difference there. Just a wee bit. All right, let's start with the, the small ones, I guess, and work our way to the, the problems. 
because that's the type of person I am. Alrighty, so uh, CL2 should be 4.7250. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it either. Nope. 4.7250. There we go. We have a bingo. All right, and the plus is there. So that goes like that. And Bob's your uncle. All right. Next, we have CL3, and that is one microfarad 50 volt. We have a bunch of those. So we're going to see if there's any. Let's see, that's that. And then CL1 over here is a 10 microfarad 50, so slightly different. I'm just going to clean that spot. I mean, that just might be flux, but it also might not be. Alrighty. Hey Dave, how's it going? And Trina and CSUDSU, everyone who uh, stopped by, they did not say hello to. Hello, hello, hello. Alright, let's uh, continue on with this. So the next one here is CL3, and again, that's a uh, 1 microfarad 50 volt. That's what this is. I always like to triple check and double check. Because these are kinds of pains to uh, do, and I want to make sure I don't make big stupid mistakes. Small stupid mistakes are okay, but big stupid ones, not really. All right, then CL1 is a 10 microfarad 50 volt, so that's what we need. And there we go. So once the caps are off on the analog boards, it's actually quite straightforward because you just put them in where they're supposed to go. And sometimes I'll put some in and, and solder them, and sometimes I'll just put a bunch in and do it at once. So I'm going to put a bunch in here. This is CP11 is next, and this is a 22025. Two twenty twenty five. This is a two twenty sixteen. They may have sent me that for this one. Which is interesting because they went down a rating. So again, this is CP eleven. And I'm just gonna note that on my board that they went down a rating. So when I'm reading this guide later, I can note that and not forget. And my pen is right in front of me and I couldn't see it. So CP11 went down to 16 volts from the 25. Uh, I will trust their judgment on that, I suppose. I usually try and keep to the same values that uh, were shipped, which is why in my recapping guides, I take them apart, I draw something like this, and I write that down because you'll find a recapping guide online, but it's very difficult to find the original values. And sometimes it's very important if you're troubleshooting or something. All right, so CP37, let's do that next. And that is one microfarad 50. So that's another one of these. CP37 
Some points on the bottom of this board are pointy. Who would have thought? Pointy board is pointy. Alrighty. And let's see what else we're going to do. Didn't I just say CP37? Crap, where did, I put, where, where did I put that one? Oh, CP35. Oh, 35 and 37 are the same thing. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's getting late, folks. I'm being stupid. Oh, why does that make you different from any other day? Shut up. <clears throat> Ow. Oh, that one just dug right into my thumb there. Yow. All right, CF3. That's a 1,016. It's going to be one of these bulky guys. So we have some 1,025s. This is a 220.50. So this is 1,010. See, that's strange to me. Why would they go down to... Oh, no, that's CP6 is a 1,010. Or CP6. That's a 1,010, right? No. See, my six CP6 is different. No, I'm an idiot. I can't read. Um, what is this? 1,010. So 1, 000, that's CP7. So CP7 is 1,010. So let's put that in before we lose our minds yet again. There's a method to this madness. Not a good one, but there is a method. Oh, and we have more caps hiding over here. How silly of me. These are 470.25s. And these go by CP9, CP10, and CP11. So let's put those in. Can't get enough of that analog board recapping. I know, Dave. It's one of those things where for years I said, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Because I didn't want to have to discharge CRTs, and I'm squeamish around analog stuff, and I really don't enjoy that type of thing, but um, this particular individual was very kind, and they sent me this Mac Classic, because I said, look, I'm looking for an iPad, and they said, well, if you recap my Mac Classic, I'll give you my iPad. I'm like, okay. And, uh, yeah, that's what we did. And I am needed that iPad to do some... Um, teleprompter stuff for upcoming videos, because... The old iPad I was using is no longer functioning in the way it needs to. It's not working with the app anymore, and it's just an iPad that was a hand-me-down anyway, and it's stuck on iOS 10 and all this stuff. So it was really nice to have one that's running the latest version, and I could actually, you know, download new apps with and not worry about incompatibilities and stuff like that. It just you know, the, the simple things that, you know, oh, I wish my teleprompter, you know, would function so I could actually read off of this thing and make this long-winded video without making a mistake. And now I can do that, which is awesome. So, thank you. Uh, CP10 is, is done. CP9 is the same thing. So let's get another one of those for CP9. And we're going to put that in here. And the reason I'm doing this tonight is because um, the window of them being available is quite short. So I want to try and get this done as quickly as possible. Because I have other repairs that are more in-depth to get into. This one hopefully will be fairly straightforward. And now I've just jinxed myself. Um, CP9, CP10. And what's the other one? CP9, CP10. Okay, so what about CP6? What does that do? That's a different one. I'm just checking the ones around it, make sure I didn't need anything. CP36 is a different one. CP8 is a different one. And CP2 is a different one. Okay, great. Well, Bibi Ask, that's just how Apple makes them. If you want Linux, you go with a, another tablet. I mean, that's how it is. All right, uh, CF2. That's not what I'm looking for. CF4, 4725. Perfect. CF4. Put that in. Put that in. Bada bing. Bada boom. Next. Um, I think we have one more of those. Nope, we don't. We're all done with those. 
All right, so we need to figure out where this 1010 goes. That's CP7. There we go. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did I put the wrong one in there? Maybe. Yeah. I'll say. No, wait, that's also 1010. Never mind. This is just like the same exact one. I'm an idiot. See, it's getting late and I make mistakes and blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't do this while you're tired. See, that's interesting. I need 1016s and they give me 1010s. But we're going to work around this because maybe there's a method to this madness here. All right, so we need 2216s, uh, tens rather. So let's do this. Gosh, I haven't jailbroken an iOS device in ages. Not that they make it really easy anymore. Always with those patches and stuff. There was a time where, you know, jailbreaking your iPhone was just a way of life. Like, you could do it easily. You didn't have to worry. I mean, I have no idea how it is now, but from what I remember reading, it's very difficult because Apple patches a lot of these exploits pretty damn quickly. And if you upgrade to one version too much, you're sort of screwed. I know they're, you know, tethered things and this and that, but I... I mean, the last time I jailbroke something was with my iPhone 3G, because I wanted to record video. And I don't even know if that video file still exists or where it is. It wasn't good quality. <laughs> the processor could not handle it, even if the camera could. All right, so again, this is a 2210 volt. Go down the list here. That is CP6. So we put that in the proper orientation there. This could be like a rat's nest to solder all these in. And CP, all right, the next one here. I keep getting distracted, sorry folks. 2210 is, no, see that's another, that's, CP36. There it is. Some of these caps are much shorter and smaller than their 1992 equivalent or whatever year it was. Hey, Scarlet Swordfish, how's it going? Anybody else I missed? Hello? Sorry, I'm just uh, putting caps onto the board. And it's kind of one of those things you have to pay careful attention to or you can screw it up in a big way. All right, so CP8, what is that? That is 2216. I'm, I don't think I have those. Yeah, that's, I might not be able to complete this. We have a 2225, we have a 1035 so I guess let's just do process of elimination here CP2 is 1035 because I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion and I could be completely wrong and it could just be me being paranoid that I don't have enough caps here but time will tell because some of the cap values are a little bit different than the originals some of this tape does not want to come off of these legs. Jeez, I'm, jeez, I'm crackers. All right, I forgot what the heck what I was doing. 1,035. CP2. That's this guy here. Okay. And what is CP8? That's the 2216 that I don't have. CP12 is the 1016, which I have 1025s. 
and I have it in 1010, but I don't have any 1016s, so I'm not sure what they want me to do there. Uh, let's look to CF3. That's another 1016. CP31 is a 1006.3. It's a weird one. 1010. 2250. I am very confused here. Those are 50 microfarad ones. 2547. Yeah, I'm bewildered here. I guess I just have to figure out where they want me to put these because. Huh. <sighs> All right, CF1 is a 4725. Let's at least put that in there. So we don't have to worry about that. CF1, you go there. I mean, these console 5 kits are great and everything, but again, my nitpick is they'll include caps that are different from the originals, and they. This list they have is the cap list of like the originals or the replacements it's unclear i mean i i could also just be confused 2216 2216 2216 i have a 22050 that doesn't help me 2000 uh, 2225 where is this one go 2200 25. We have a 2216. And we have a 2210. So the 2210 is CP6, which we already installed. So this is supposed to be 2216. That's supposed to be CP8. Which goes there. I just want to make sure there's not any other ones I'm missing. Just scrolling down this list with my brain. All right, so that goes to CP8 then. It's just one of those things like you're putting a puzzle together and you're like, there's not enough pieces left. Don't forget to like the video and all that stuff, folks. If you're still hanging around, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We only have a handful of caps more to go. CP4, CP5. Those are different. So CP4 is 4725. That's this guy. CP4, 4725. And I repeat myself a lot because I want to make sure I get it right. All right. And then CP5 is 50 microfarad. I'm sorry, 50 volt, 1 microfarad. So we just peel this tape off. This tape is for masking tape, and it's stupid sticky. Just get the wee capacity capacitor legs off capacity. My goodness. Anyone have any uh, plans for the, the long weekend here in the U.S.? <clears throat> Anybody do anything fun? I'm going to be tinkering around with a lot of crap, but what else is new? Alrighty. So what do we got left here? I'm going to make a little short list. We have CP12, we have CF2, CF3, CP31, I think that's it. So we have four caps left and six caps left over. So it's going to be fun. Well, that sounds like fun, Adam. Is that a different laser, or is that the one I sent you?
or the one you bought rather from the VCF event remotely. Um, all right, so CF2, we're not dealing with that. CP31, that's that. CF3, all right, this is going to be a head scratcher here. I just need to figure this out. So I'm going to write a little list up here original, and this is going to be uh, console 5. And this will just make it easier for me to understand. Uh, so CF2 is up here, and the original was a 220 microfarad, 16 volt. Okay. And the same goes for what console 5 recommends. Now the CF uh, CP31, we're going to skip for whatever reason. Uh, that is a 1000 microfarad, 6.3 volts. And that's the same that console 5 says. Then we have CP12, which is all the way over here. And that's supposed to be a 1016. And console five says that. So this list that console five gives you is the capacitor list from the original sometimes. But in this case, they're not supplying you with those capacitors, even though they're, that's on the list. So it's confusing. That's where I'm getting confused, and that's where a lot of people, I would assume, would get confused, too. Uh, and this one is also 1,016 volts, and that's what they say. Okay, so now we have to play the game of which capacitors are the closest value to these four that remain. So we have a 22050. Now, that can only fit in CF2. So even though that's not a 16 volt, this is a 50 volt, they went quite high in the uh, voltage here, but I'm going to allow it because that's the only one I have to put in there. Okay, now that's done. So they, oh, let me mark this down. So they did a 50 volt one of that. All right, now CF3. So we have... A few options here. We have a 1,010 volt and 1,025. So I'm assuming the 1,010 volt will have to be CP31 because that's 6.3 volts, but they're giving us a 10 volt one here. Okay, so that's CP31. Again, a bit of a difference here. Ow! I just shoved my finger right into the metal. Yowza! Just put them randomly in. I, if it was your machine, Adam, and you wanted me to do that, I probably still would do it. <laughs> I'm squeamish when analog electronics work as they're intended. Yeah, it's just I'm tired and pokey, stabby bits. Alrighty, so these are the last two. So CP12 and CP, uh, CF3 are the same. So just straighten out these legs. And that's negative. So we're going to do that. And after we put these in, we're just going to confirm the polarity. We'll solder them on, and hopefully that will be the end of it. This will all work. We'll be happy. We can go home. Well, I am home, but I can stop streaming at least. Alrighty. That's all of them in there. <laughs> Define minor. If it, if it has that guy Mac 84 sticker on it, I don't want it. All right, so there we go. That's the, the front of it with all the fancy caps on. Let's get those wires out of the way. 
And then look at the back. Oh, that'll just work, right? <laughs> and just, yeah, just plug it in. It'll be fine. All right, so before we solder anything, we're just gonna do a visual check here. Make sure we use our cheat sheet to make sure the polarity and everything is different. And so these ones that we put in are 25 volts. All right, so this is negative, that's positive, negative, positive, positive, great. This one's negative, 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 negative. Oh, we missed a cap. Good thing I'm checking. Negative, negative. This one is a 10 microfarad, 50 volt. That's where this little bugger goes. That's wait, that's a one microfarad. Oh, that's that's a U. I'm an idiot. Uh, so that is CP34. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Let's put you in there. Alrighty, just do that section again. Positive, negative, 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 negative. I'm just making sure the polarity on these caps are correct because that's very important. Negative, 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 negative. Excellent. We're all negative and positive in that order. So. Let's uh, switch the camera here, get our flux, and we'll just flux up these areas, and we'll start soldering. That one looks like it could be touching, but I think it's on the same point, so I'll allow it. I'll double check. And then I might just want to reflow like the flyback and a few other areas, although they seem to fine, you you just want to take the opportunity while you're in here to flux or not to flux. Yeah, sorry if the fan is making noise. It will do that. clipping off these little metal leads and throwing them in the trash so I do not end up stepping on them or getting them stuck to my fingers. Ow! I just stabbed myself. Flux capacitor is fluxing. Trim this one just a little bit extra because there's another point that is so close to it. And I don't want to risk that touching each other. You know, when things get warm, they can expand. And the last thing we want is something to eventually wiggle its way towards something else. Probably very rare that would happen, but. I'm a bit of a worry wart, if you couldn't tell. No, really?
Alrighty, just clipping these off. Sorry I'm not paying attention much to the chat. I'm just very focused on getting us underway here. And if anybody says something in the chat that they want uh, read, you could just do that little at Mac84 thing, or you could, if you really want my attention, you could send me a super chat. Of course, that's not required. We had some very, 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 very generous people before, so thank you very much for helping support my insane little vintage Macintosh efforts here. It's greatly appreciated. Never did I hope I would have uh, such a fine audience of lovely people supporting me. It's very humbling. In a good way. Alright, we have a few more here to go. You know, this can be time consuming, but, you know, at least it's satisfying. Again, I did not like how close that was to another one. All right, more flux. You're not sure where your MacBook Air is. Is it an 11-inch? Because if it's an 11-inch, we forgive you. I've never owned one, but I've seen them. They're, they're tiny. Bruce loves his. He has an 11-inch one, if I recall correctly. And my eyes are not letting me focus as well as they were a few hours ago. But I really want to finish this. And I'm not trying to be hasty. I'm just trying to be precise and diligent in my work. Sorry, this view is terrible. Bruce has been loitering the entire time. That's okay, Bruce. See, I did that one without flux and it kind of backfired. Flux is very important, folks. I don't know how some people solder without it. it drives me bonkers and they're like oh it's not really taking here I'm like use the flux use the flux Luke yeah got that one done Bruce will remember the terrible flux that I started out with, but even that was, you know, it was something. Y'all got to start somewhere, and I had 
Some of the cheapest tools and cheapest materials I could find on Amazon or eBay or wherever, you know. But, you know, got to start somewhere. Uh, one more to go. I th no, two more. I already did half of them. You don't need a lot of flux. You just need like a little, a little bit of a dot just to help it out there. Because yes, the solder has a little bit in it, but not enough to my liking. And it's just a personal preference thing too, but... Alright, so I do want to clean up some things here. I think that'll be okay. That'll be fine. Yeah, alright, cool. So what I'm going to do is I am turning off the soldering iron for a second. I'm going to go upstairs. I have to give the rabbit her medicine. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Use this time to go use the bathroom. Take a drink, etc., etc. Be right back.
There we go. I muted myself. And we're back. Okay. So. Um, what we're basically going to be doing here is there are a few areas on this board that I would like to reflow things on just to play it safe. One of them is the flyback. And I think that's really all I'm going to be really concerned about. Everything else looks pretty darn good here, but I do like to touch up the spots that get very hot. And on this one, it's probably just the flyback I'm going to be concerned about. Um, so the flyback transformer is here. We have all those little spots there. So I'm just going to flux that up. And I'm not going to wipe away the old solder or anything that aggressive. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on it. Why did I turn my fan on? And uh, just reflow it. Because these spots get very hot, you could easily have cracked solder joints and fun stuff like that. And we do not want that, especially on something that is going to be carrying a lot of high voltage. The goal here is to fix this and not see it back on my desk. It's a selfish goal, but it also is a good one for the customer as well. Yes, this is the analog board, Trina. We already did the logic board in the previous live stream. And what is this big doohickey here? Oh, that is that. That looks fine. Uh, I am going to just touch these up here because we're right next to it anyway. Is it necessary? No. So it doesn't hurt to give it a little bit of extra strength after 30 odd years or so. Okay. Pretty happy with the rest of this stuff. One or two of these I might, you know, let me fix up some of them. You start reflowing some things, you just do a lot more. It's the nature of it. Better safe than sorry. Add some flux there. And that cable's trying to escape from me. The only problem when it's not a socket and it's a cable, they could just decide, nah, you're not going to get me. Is that that cable? Yeah, this one. I 
That should be fine. Let's get the red one nice and snug in there too. Yeah, just want to make sure those are really snug in there. And now we are just doing a final check and we'll be turning this board on and making sure everything is all happy. Alright, so I'm just going to use a toothbrush, just clean this up a little bit. Uh, there is a website. Jay, are you still in the chat? In regards to your website, you should be paying attention. If not, I will eventually get to it. But there is a website uh, that does list all of the Apple recalls and such may be of interest to you in trying to uh, look up some of those machines. All right, let's do that manually because Jay is not paying attention. I am pasting that in here. So that website there, there's a, a list of all of the uh, recall programs for the MacBook Pros and all that fun stuff. Can you fix my G4 power supply? I mean, theoretically, probably, but I, I generally do not do power supplies and I generally do not do analog boards. And there's a statement on my website why, but the long and short of it is that if there's not a kit made for it, like this was a kit, I ordered the replacement parts from a website they guaranteed all the parts would be in there. It was a set price, etc. If there's not a kit, I have to open the thing. I have to remove each component. I have to measure it electronically and I have to measure it physically with uh, a dealie like this to determine the exact height and width of each part. Then I have to find a suitable replacement part. I have to buy it. I have to hope it fits. And if it doesn't fit, I have to start all over again. And that gets very, very old very fast, and it also gets very expensive. And so that's why I generally, as a rule, do not do analog board or power supply board stuff for people other than my close friends. Or in this case, somebody traded me something. I thought it was just going to be an analog board. I said I'd fix up their machine. However, there are other issues with this, which required the... Uh, analog board to be fixed. I'm sorry. I said I'd fix the logic board for them, but uh, I ended up having to do the analog board too. So generally, as a rule of thumb, I, I don't do those types of things. Now, there are a lot of smart people out there uh, that can do that, but there you go. He's a spam bot. Oh, that was a very convincing one. Who would you recommend to repair it? Well, there's a lot of other people on Tinker Different that are uh, doing these things. But uh, go to, I would say go to tinkerdifferent.com, T-A-N-K-E-R, different.com. Great website. A lot of smart people on there, and I'm sure. Oops, I got some alcohol in where I didn't want to. I didn't want to get it onto the speaker. A lot of smart people on there, a lot of people who do repair services and stuff. You could find them on tinkerdifferent.com. I'm not the only person in the world that does this, thank goodness, because I don't have the time to fix all these machines. I wish I did. That was yeah, sort of a neat full-time job to do this. Maybe, kind of, sort of, maybe not. I'd go broke, but what else is new? All right, so I'm just cleaning up uh, some of the flux and junk, and then we'll plug her in and get it all going. Thank you very much, Trina. Appreciate uh, the chat help here. And how much do we have watching us? 38, I think. 
So everyone who's sticking around, who's been here for more than an hour? Sound off in the chat. Who's been here for more than two hours? Sound off in the chat. And if you are a crazy person like me, and you've been here for over, just over three hours, pat yourself on the back. <laughs> and thank you. Hopefully, that means I'm doing something right. All right, so again, just spot cleaning some of these areas, especially where some of that nasty cap stuff was hanging out here before. Apple's Anonymous, super fan, has been sticking around for three hours. My goodness. Kudos to you. Thank you. Very kindly. Yeah, the, I mean, most of this is flux, I'm sure. But a lot of it looks like cap juice. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just clean it off all the same. I will say, with even with all this stuff, I'm not seeing any uh, bad traces or rotted vias or anything like that. Everything looks generally clean, which is good. Just trying to be very diligent with this. Again, do not want to have to reopen this again. Do not want to have to discharge that CRT again. Want to be able to get this back to its original owner in one piece. And not forget about this repair. Because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to go off to VCF Midwest. I'm going to do a bunch of things. I'm going to come back and work on other projects and not have the time dedicated to the stuff that I thought I would. Ooh, that's a yucky bit there. Would a fiberglass pencil for cleaning? Um, I've heard about that. I've seen that. Um, I think that would work in some areas. Um, this is just a lot of goo here. Like, not necessarily uh, bad traces or something that I'd have to clean off with, like, a chisel or something or a, a scalpel. It's just, like, a lot of capacitor goo and or flux. It's hard to tell because they're both yellow and goopy. Those two points are kissing, but that should be fine. Again, this is uh, overkill. You probably don't have to do this. I probably shouldn't even be doing this, but... I try to make these things look nice and pretty. And I also want to make sure it works. <laughs> uh. I don't think I'm going to get all of this flux off, but an attempt is being made. And I'm just about done here. Yep, that's certainly flux, thankfully. Not anything else. But my uh, cotton swab keeps getting its little bits stuck in here. And I don't want to deal with that. Uh, no, thank you. Alrighty. So, place your bets, folks. Do you think this is going to turn on successfully? Or do you think it's going to be back on my bench for diagnosing? I certainly hope that this is the end of this board being on my bench and that it's all happy working and all that fun stuff from now until the end of time. Want Macintosh or Apple is on my wish list? Well, not much. Um, if somebody like just gave me like an Apple Lisa or a 20th anniversary Mac or a Next Cube or something like that or a Quadra 950 or one of those things, I would gladly accept it. But it's not one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, I need one. Because I have so many different machines that do so many different things that I'm, I'm set, you know, with. And we were all working from home and everything and stuck in our homes and locked down and all that stuff. I had plenty to do. <laughs> Not that I was that productive. 
But in theory, I had plenty to do. All right, so let's get the chassis back on the desk here. Move the analog board to the side. Put this down so I can put the machine's face down there. I can ship out a pallet of Mac Pluses. I'm good at them. So thoughtful of you. So very kind, but I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. All right. Okay. There goes my fan. So there's a few things we have to plug in to the analog board here. I'm going to try and do them carefully. That's for the speaker. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some whispers of things that might be at VCF Midwest, but um, oh, that didn't go right. But you know, the things I'm after are generally speaking quite pricey, so you would have to uh, not break the bank. If I'm going to go after it, because I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's fun getting these machines, but the amount of maintenance and work to go into keeping them up and running is uh, really like a full time job for some of these things. And you just have to sort of make that part of the negotiation, part of the price. Now it's like, oh, yeah, it works, but it needs this. Oh yeah, it works, but you need that. Oh yeah, but you need. And it's like okay, well, sounds like a lot of fixing is required for some of these things, and a lot of them are, and that's totally fine if you're willing to do that. And that's a lot of the fun too of trying to fix up these machines is getting them going and everything. But sometimes it's just like, you know, if I'm paying all this money, I want that to be fixed already. Heck, was that noise? I need a screwdriver and that one won't fit oh this one won't so a uh, link to an Apple replacement program for only the 15 inch model um, yeah did you try that website I linked that might give you a better insight maybe sorry um, you could probably post on like tinker different you probably get a better answer But just off the top of my head, that's the website I know that has a good amount of stuff. Probably correct, Trina. Whoops. Thank goodness for magnetic tips. I did not want that to fall in there. That screw is not... Uh, maybe this is reversed. Maybe this bigger screw goes there. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Computers are fun. Yeah, I think that's it. That one's wobbly too. Then where the heck does this go? I don't know. Isn't there supposed to be like a little grounding wire? Oh, yeah, wait, maybe? No? No, that's already connected there. Sorry. So there's no grounding wire that goes to the back here. And these actually look like they're the same. They're obviously not. Do I have any other screws in here that would fit? Yes. Okay, so now we get to play the game of where the other screw goes. Um, huh. I love remembering these things. 
that that means I hate remembering it. All right, well, let's put this one here at least because that one fits. Well, hold on, let's see. This one might fit there too. All right, that one's good. This one goes there. No screws on the side, just two on the edge. So there's two that go there, Bruce? So I have three screws. Grab the camera here for a moment. There and there. I have this guy. He was in the baggie, so it must have came from this machine. I'm not seeing anything on the side, but I was like, huh? Where else could, could, could it go? Very interesting. Hey, why don't you uh, stop spamming, guy? No one's reading your crap anyway. Just get deleted. Just save us some time and money. Unless it was to, like, screw down a component. I mean... Was there anything that attached the board to the machine? I don't think so. It's a little, little screw. I mean, it, it almost would look like a grounding screw, but I know this is, you know, that there's not a thing on this model. It's like a hard drive screw track. Yeah, it look, does look like it would go to the hard drive, but all of that's uh, in. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. It's always annoying when... Oh, does it go there? No. Doesn't fit there. Well, we're just going to leave it in the bag for now. <laughs> Worry about it later, I suppose. We can put the little piece of paper here back on. I should have put that on in the beginning because these little plastic tabs have to be sort of aligned correctly. And that's sort of going to screw me up now because I'm an idiot and I should have put those two back in. <sighs> Ugh. Let's see if I can sneak these in without having to take the whole analog board off, huh? And the answer, my friends, is no. I mean, I probably could, but no. So I get to undo the screws I just did. Yep, and if you don't see the spam, that's because we have awesome moderators who help me out greatly. Because what some people don't understand is during a stream like this, got like 30 or 40, maybe 50 people watching. Stuff just flies by. I'm not looking at the chat half the time. I'm doing stuff. That's what you're watching me to do. Right? So, uh, I have some awesome people here. Like Adam and Trina and Bruce and all these other cool people who help me out to make sure that anybody who's being a, an idiot is just like, you don't even see them. Like their messages just go bye-bye. And they go to YouTube jail. And it's very, very helpful. And it saves me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So thank you. All right, those two plastic clips are in. So let's do the rest of these plastic clips over here. He wants to pay me $200. I tell you, probably the capacitors alone for that job probably are going to be close to $100, if not higher. And I tell you what, I charge much more than $100 to do the job to get those caps installed. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like a good amount of money until you factor in the time and effort involved and then the 
high risk of, since there's no capacitor guide or kit for it, of that job just not working. And then who's going to pay you your time and money for something that wasn't successful? Yep. Ah, the fun of computers, huh? Let's put these screws back where they belong. That's why I, I generally am, am doing this now just for people I personally know. And uh, the existing jobs that I have already agreed to do. Because uh, especially with uh, my job and everything, I don't really have the time I used to. And I still enjoy doing this stuff, but I have my own machines to fix. <laughs> I got tons of them. All right, so let's stop yapping here, and we could put all of our screws back here. We have the analog board reinserted. No, I'm not. I'm not really. Not really. Not really accepting anything. I mean, if if somebody from the chat is like, "Look, I've tried everything," blah blah blah. Like, if if it's something that I look at it and go, "Oh yeah, that looks pretty easy," I might take pity on you. In a good way. I'm not. I'm not. Trying to disparage anyone, um, but you know, I'd, I'd be like, "Look, you know, that's not too bad. I could probably do that." But you know, some of these jobs, it's like, "Yeah, no, I'd I'd rather not redo a machine I've never done before." <laughs> For immediate repair. Oh no, Adam, your shipping got your shipment got lost, and hey, look, my A forty AV works again. <laughs> uh, we have fun here. Okay. That's touching that, that's touching that. Let's put the uh, anode cap back on. Now, this one is very stubborn because it has these, these very thick clips. So I actually have to like get a screwdriver to help me with this, which is kind of frustrating. Um, let me use this one. Saw your video on the video vision card. Did you ever try that card? The other seller thought was the correct one. No, because I, I don't think I had the drivers for it, and I think that's a still capture card. I'm not sure if that's a video capture one. So it really didn't interest me as much. Not to say I will never try it, but it's in the box of uh, other stuff to tinker around with one day when I get bored. But uh, I'm glad you uh, saw that video. That one was such a pain to get going because it's one of those videos where you, you have an idea in mind. You're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I'm going to show this, and I want to show that, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And then you go and do it, and nothing works the way it should. <laughs> nothing works the way it's advertised. You're running into weird issues. You're running with the right software. And nothing wants to work. And you're like, okay. Oh, and I forgot to clip on that power cord. Oh, that's going to be... That's just, that's just bubble wrap. Steven, don't have a heart attack. I forgot to plug in this little cord. That's for the hard disk. Uh, that's going to be fun to snake in there, isn't it? At least nothing has been energized, so I don't have to worry about zapping myself too much. There we go. Crisis averted. Alright, so we have the hard drive power cable here. Not even going to power on that drive, because it probably needs uh, a blue SCSI or something. That's fine. That's sturdy. All right, so let's turn on this guy and see what happens. Yeah, that's, don't worry. Don't worry, Starbuck. I had the same exact reaction. <laughs> oh, now I have to get the, anal the uh, logic board for this, which I put in a box. <laughs> Oops, more bubble wrap. Let's play the game of does Steven remember where he put the customer's board, which was on his desk before he cleaned things. Oh, I think it's right over here. Yoink! So 
in one of these similar looking boxes. Wait, was it in a white box or a brown box? Oh, Steven, you idiot. Stop sipping on the things. Um, ah, poopy. Yeah, I started cleaning up all these bins and stuff, and I didn't finish. But there's a lot of crap on the ground. In this area, at least. Alright, Steven, where did you put the board? You had it in... Oh, maybe it's over here. Stepping on that bubble wrap. Nope, this one has a, a label for me. Oh, wait. I think I found the box. There it is. He even had the damn thing labeled. Okay, here we go. Ow. This one looks pretty darn clean. Yeah, this one had some uh, nasty caps by the sound chip. That was fun. Because we had to take the sound chip off. And we had to put a little trace there. Fun times. Yeah, I know. What I would say if you're looking to get like a MacBook. Just get like a, a, a model that doesn't have those issues. Because let's just be honest. The Intel stuff is getting very affordable right now. And so even if you're spending what? $50, $100 more? You're probably not going to have to worry about some of the issues that plague these other models that are slightly cheaper. And in the long run, it's less of a headache. So that's just my opinion. But I'm not in the market for one. Alrighty. Let's put in the logic board here. And fire up this little machine. And get it going again. It would help if I put the board in the proper slots. Just slides right in. There we go. Now we are not plugging in the internal hard drive because I'll be using a blue SCSI. Actually, we don't have to. You know why? This guy has a built-in ROM. Speaking of ROM, I want to test the memory too. So the memory module that came with the machine. Okay, plugging that in here too. That could only go in the one way. There we go. Now we're ready. <sighs> that is weird. Let's see more chats. Oh well, this this screen is truncated. So you're you're looking at the past, probably. All right. Let's get the keyboard and mouse. I should move this system that I was testing here. The blue scuzzy. I have a Mac 2 CI here that I was testing for another reason. I'll put that over there. And we'll steal the keyboard and the mouse that was plugged in the track. Sound good? Excellent. Everyone still with me? Maybe. 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 Let me just set this up so I get the camera in a good spot. This way we could all see it. And this is not going to work. Hold, please. Pro tip, do not pile your tools on things and then have to maneuver everything just to move things. It's not fun. Oh 
really need to clean off this part of the desk again. There we go. You got you got some nice views of the grills of the Mac Classic. How about that? All right. Uh, Ubuntu on a one comma one is a, probably a very good use of a one comma one. All right. Let's make sure everything is plugged in correctly. We are grounded because that's very very important. Yep, and that's screwed in, that's screwed in, that's screwed in. All right, let's plug this in. Let's get the camera all sorted nicely, if we can. And let's see if this will work without too much trouble, huh? I sure hope so. All right. Three, two, one. Got a chime. It's a good sign. We got a nice screen. Oh, is it still doing that Boeing thing? I hope not. Well, of course we have to uh, restart the darn thing. Or plug in a SCSI. I'm gonna plug in the, the blue SCSI I have. Because that uh, boot ROM thing sometimes uh, has a mind of its own. And it could decide just not to work for no reason. All right. Might have to adjust the uh, geometry of the CRT slightly. Just hoping that it's not moving or wiggling or anything like that. Got Happy Mac. Got the speaker pop during the startup. Yeah, the screen's a little bit on this side compared to this side, like shifted slightly, but that's that's fine. The screen is wobbling just slightly. That's kind of concerning. Well, of course, it's not going to like that. Well, at least I can get into the wrong here. Command option XO. Yeah, sorry, Bruce. This came from a two two CI. I have two uh, system folders. Whoa! What the hell was that? Okay. Well, I have some troubleshooting to do on this, I suppose. Let me turn this off for a second. Let me put a uh, proper SCSI image for uh, the hard disk that... Where the heck did my SD card reader go? Did I bring it upstairs or something stupid? Oh, goodness. You'll need to check the voltages. Yes, I, I will need to do that. Seems, oopsie. See, I'm just dropping everything because I'm a, a klutz. Let's take out the, uh, take that out, put that card in here, let's put a proper software image on here for the system. It troubleshot, <laughs> it troubleshot me, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, maybe the ROM is all quirky, who knows. All right, so yeah, system 7.5 was the first disk image. We don't want that. All right, so it should boot to system 7.1.
System 5 won't run on this, actually. I don't think so. 608L, I think, is the earliest you could run on an original classic. Bruce could probably verify. I might be confusing that with a classic, too. But, all right, 3, 2, 1. You're trying to prove it's false. Well, if I had the, the bootable disk on me, I'd, I'd try that out, but I don't. And we're nearing midnight here, so I just want to kind of just make sure this thing boots. It booted before. want to make sure it recognizes all the memory. But Thomas B., that's an excellent thing to post on TinkerDifferent.com because there's a lot of other crazy people like me. Wait, why is it? That's not what I want you to boot. I renamed the image to some stupid name that you would never pick from, you blue scuzzy. Uh, maybe it's my fault. It says System 7.1. Let me double check here, because maybe I have it wrong. And that would be not surprising in the least. Let's get to do. Start. Of course, Basilisk has given me trouble. No such file or directory. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Macintosh 2. What system folder is on here? If I go to system, yeah, it's 7.1. Okay. Weird. I'm very confused. How about I just remove that? Hey, Shady Robot, how's it going? I'm just going to remove this uh, disk image off of the blue scuzzy. I wonder if the log file was still trying to boot from it. Sorry for the delay, folks. Three and five. No, it saw it. Let me just double check something. Make sure I didn't do anything stupid. Because stranger things have happened. Remove that. Let's remove that too. Let's just try and boot from this. Now let's just see what happens. I know you can't see any of this, so I apologize. But oh, would you look at that? It didn't want to boot from it. Why? Well, let's try that again. Shut down. Oh, it's booting from the CD. Well, let's remove the CD. Gosh, Basilisk is such a pain. I wish there was like a boot picker integrated into it, so you don't have to go to the options the entire freaking time. Yep, that boots to system 7.1. All right, let's shut her down, eject this thing, and try this again. My goodness. <laughs> I probably have enough of them, Adam. That's the problem. I don't use little SD cards I don't really label. I just leave them in there and assume that's the one I thought it was, but... I make an ass out of myself and I assume. Yeah, I guess I should test the floppy drive on this thing too, but I think that'll be for another time. So I probably want to clean it out. Yeah, I have the floppy MU, but I don't know where it is at the moment. Probably over there, or over there, or over there, or over there.
What the heck? How do you have this system on there? There's nothing else on that card. What the heck is going on here? I am so confused. I am so confused. There's literally... What the heck is going on here? This makes absolutely no sense. Hold on. I'm going to erase the card. I don't know if a file like is hanging around here or what, but something is, is screwy. Because this does not make any sense to me. Sorry, folks. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Oh, God. Ghost Mac. Ooh, spooky. Bruce is yelling at the screen. Like, you idiot! Maybe the name is too long. You know what? That's probably it. The frickin' file name of this is probably too long. Well, the internal hard drive is not even plugged in, so that'd be funny. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to open up Basilisk here. And I'm going to... Oh, you know what? Maybe it's just... You know, whatever. I have this other disk image. I'll just use that. I don't know what the heck this is doing. Or why it's doing it. Or whatever. But it's doing it. And it's being annoying. And I have one specifically for the classic System 7.1. We're copying that over. We're using that. And we're not going to complain. Yeah, the ROM is System 6, Adam. That is correct. I don't know why I was making a weird noise when I tried to boot from the ROM, but... Just copying that off so I can erase this. Oh, come on, just erase it. Doesn't take it out long to copy it. All right. <laughs> Let's try this one last time. Bruce is like, come on, I have to go have lunch. That'd be very neat, Adam. Very handy. If this switches to the Mac OS thing, I'm just stopping the stream. Thank goodness. All right, system 7.1. Let's hopefully, let's hope. See, look at that CRT is wobbling a bit. Maybe it just needs to warm up. Four megs of memory, perfecto. Why not just use Linux to boot? Ha ha ha. Ha. No. That's more of Sean's thing. 
Alrighty, cool. Yeah, CRT is a bit, it's just like shimmering a little bit. I don't know why, but I'm going to shut it down for now. Oh, goodness. Ugh. I mean, Jeremy, that is possible, but the image looked kind of nice. So, I don't know. But then again, I, I don't know the history behind this thing. Could have been turned on for decades, you know, just sitting around there. But, um, like a very faint little shimmer. So, what I'll probably do is just leave it on for a while, let the um, snooper test run through for like 30, 40 minutes, and just see if that makes any difference. Um, yeah, slightly concerning. But uh, I have to test the floppy drive, have to run the diagnostics and let it sit there for a while. But um, everything looks okay. I mean, maybe there's a cold solder joint or something like that. But Anywho, I think that's going to about wrap it up for today. But uh, this is quite an exciting adventure, huh? And yes, my poor, poor iMac G5 frame is sitting there. Um, that's also the power supply to Ryan's uh, Quadra. Now they have that um, part for the logic board. We can continue that. Uh, uh, there's there's some type of um, uh, like a uh, marketplace type thing. Just keep scrolling down. If you can't find it, just search for the word recap and service, and I'm sure you'll find it, Jeremy. Or just ask on Twitter. I'm sure you'll find it there too. But someone's got to got to offer them. Um, anywho. Hope everyone enjoyed the stream today, because it's been a fun three hours and 42 minutes. Uh, my goodness, that's how long... I mean, I've talked during this and stuff, but analog board repairs are fun. Especially when you put all the new parts in there, and then it's still kind of like... What are you going to do? Anywho, hopefully that irons itself out, because um, it looks a lot better than it did before, and um, less smelly, too. <laughs> Oh, God, where am I going with this? Anyway, uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after that. I'll be at VCF Midwest in Elmhurst, Illinois. So if you're going to that event and you see me, say hello. I'll give you a pin or a... Or a uh, I gotta grab it over here. Or an Eep sticker. Something fun like that. So I'm excited for that. Very much looking forward to it. And uh, very glad that uh, everyone came to watch and say hello. If you didn't like the video, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And for everyone who supported me on Patreon or gave me a super chat today or signed up for my YouTube membership thing, which I still haven't really tailored the tiers for yet, so don't press the button yet, maybe. Um, thank you very much. It's very greatly appreciated. You help support the channel, help support my insane tinkering arounds and such like that. But um, yeah, have a fire extinguisher ready. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Come see me for a free dead battery. Thank you, Adam, for accepting all the dead batteries that I will give you, and then you can pass along to other people. But that's about it for now. I'd like to thank everybody again for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll see me again real soon. And uh, take care. Bye.